What's up, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar, and we are back with Map My X. This is one of my favorite segments on the channel because I get to get together with my friends and pretend like we're all physically together in the same location. <laughs> but this is as good as it gets for now. Uh, so let me do a roundtable introduction or let these fine people introduce themselves. So let's start it over here to the right of me. Who's this guy? Who's the omnibus collector? I'm Riley. I am the Omnibus Collector. I like to collect Omnibus. Um, you may have seen my channel before. If you haven't, please check me out. And I've also been blowing it up on tip TikTok lately because it's, uh, it's a fun new environment over there. Interesting. All right. Uh, this lady down here, who is this? Oh, hello. I am Odefell. Uh, I'm a cosplayer and a comic nerd, as you can tell, because I'm here. Uh, I'm on pretty much every platform under the name Odefell. Um, spelled like this, well, spelled like this, or with a zero on Twitter. Cool, cool. Zero on Twitter. That's yes. why I, I haven't, I haven't gotten the O yet. I keep emailing them because it's a, it's a, no longer existing account, but I haven't won. Oh, okay. And this gentleman to that angle of me down here. Who is that guy? Hi, everybody. My name is Crisis with a K, a.k.a. Peter. You probably know me from my blog, CrushingCrisis.com, or anywhere where I am crushing comics on the internet. It's the easiest way to find me on Twitter and here on YouTube as well, where I cover X-Men every week in This Week in X. Awesome. Thank you all for joining me for this brain trust of mapping out and all these X-Men omnis. So this, this is an interesting era. So today... By the way, I always like to say this, just in case, I am not announcing anything. I'm not wearing a suit. So no announcements. This isn't an official thing. This is just us, if we were given the task to map out these books for Marvel Comics, because this is the kind of things that I like to talk about. So this era that we're going to be talking about today is the Kyle and Yost era of X-Men slash X-Force. And... Um, We've already got difference of opinions before the episode even started, but that's okay. That's what we're here to do. And we're going to see if we, if our powers combined can actually map these books out in omnibus format. So this is a pretty interesting era because this is Kyle and Yost, two people that came in from the animation world. They, they worked on uh, X-Men Evolution. They're the ones that created uh, X-23. And then they said, hey, we can write comics too. And they wrote like X-Men Evolution adaptations. And then they were given the duty to take over New X-Men, which was formerly known as New Mutants by, who was it, Phillips and the Zuni? What was it? Denunzio? Denunzio. Like that. Maybe that's how you say it? Or De Filippis? I don't remember. Let me see. Sure. Yes. One of those two, two people that were working on this book, this relaunch of New Mutants, after Morrison left New X-Men... They decided to change the title from the new X-Men. It's a little confusing, but I promise we'll get there. That's when uh, Kyle and Yost came in and said, yeah, let's shake some things up. And right off the bat, they did with a bus full of dead mutants. And, uh, and that was a rough start. Yeah. Those two Nuncio, books right And Phillips, right? Nuncio De Filippis um, was the writer on here. And Christina Weir Christina. and Chris Claremont in here. Weir, that was the other one. Uh, Matt Murdock says, before we even start, which PD Hulk cover did I get? Can't decide. I got the direct market cover. I like the other one a little bit better, though, the standard edition cover. Uh, Peter is wearing a nice jacket. That's close to a suit. That is true. I just, this is just how I appear on YouTube. I know it causes confusion and dismay for some of the near mint condition fans, but this is just how I always <laughs> appear. It has no correlation no. to announcing anything. Nonsense. All right. So... I called this the Messiah Trilogy before, and Peter snapped at me the last time we talked about this on the ice. <laughs> we there we go. Over. And I said, I'm sorry you don't call it that, but that's what the cool kids are calling it. And then we got into this debate as to what exactly is the Messiah Trilogy. And I said, I don't consider the Messiah Trilogy what everybody else considers the Messiah Trilogy. So let's go ahead and start talking about this era. Are we all in agreement that this era really kicks off with the very first crossover? like in a long time for X-Men. And that is Endangered Species slash Messiah Complex. Is that a good starting on point, Peter? 
Yes. I, d I think just because of how some other things have been collected, there's a chance that some little tiny portion might have to get scooped up that's slightly earlier than that. But, but we'll get there when we get there in the map. I, d I do agree that endangered species actually kind of kicks this off and then as a sort of prologue and then Messiah Complex is, is the first big hit. Okay. Okay. So if we were to map out this era, how would you start then, Peter? So let, let, let's talk about that. Let, let's talk about this era and how, how you would start it. Well, uh, look, I you know, I always start with some kind of disclaimer, right? So I want to disclaim, and then I want to throw it actually to Riley for a second, because he's got some of the books in his hands that I'm talking about. Okay. I think now that we're into this, what I call the trade era, after House of M and Marvel, when every book, with very few exceptions, we're getting a first release trade paperback or premiere hardcover when the collection hit. At this point, we don't have to argue as much about individual issues because we're really arguing about which trades would get recollected and mushed together into what book. In some instances, there could be like a spare issue here or there that contribute, but we're kind of breaking out issues that have already been broken out. And then furthermore, Marvel has started to recollect a lot of these things in this era. Riley already showed the Academy X books, Matt Fraction has had complete collections, X-Force has had complete collections. So sometimes it really becomes a game of like puzzling together the complete collections and then figuring out what is that one small extra thing that the Omnibus can have that maybe there wasn't room for, or maybe there wasn't a market for in the complete collection. So before we even start say where to start, like, do you all agree with that assumption? I'd love to hear what Riley thinks because I know you've got some of those complete collections. <clears throat> um, I don't have the Matt Fraction complete collections to like show them or anything, but do we would we want to start like at the beginning of Brubaker's run? That's so, where the first question comes. So I I wanted to start. So a lot of people. The reason I wanted to uh, put this together is because the Messiah Complex, which kicks off this era to me in my eyes, has been out of print for quite a while, and I'm talking about the oversized hardcover. And right. since Marvel hardly ever reprints hardcovers. I think, well, if they put a bunch of things together, there could actually be two or three books in this time, in this, what, what, what is known as the Messiah Trilogy. That's where I'm coming from. Because if we start at the Ed Brew Baker run that then we're talking about, man, and, and there are some orphaned issues that have not been collected in oversized Oversize. format. But we can go back to that. I think we stick with Messiah because that's the beginning of a new hope. That's whoa, that's episode four, right? Like, like, like mutant, <laughs> no more mutants, 198 mutants, and out of nowhere, this little right. police, uh shows up in Alaska, right? Like hope for the mutant uh, population. I think that's where this starts. Peter? So I think let's just say out loud the thing that we're dancing around, then maybe Odeville can share some opinions. There's a mar uh, uh, specifically marooned run. It's called The Extremists. It happens yes. after the Brubaker stuff that's space stuff. So as Riley was just showing off, the Brubaker stuff that starts his run of Uncanny X-Men actually kind of begins in Deadly Genesis. And then it's the rise and fall of the Shi'ar Empire, which got its own initial release oversized hardcover. And that has since been subsumed by the War of Kings omnibuses. So even though it's X-Men and even though it's Brubaker, it kind of doesn't make sense to cram into an X-Men line because everything that happens after it all extends into space stuff. So really, we've got this one teeny little run that's been abandoned. It's the extremist. It's 47 to 491 in Uncanny X-Men. It happens right before the start of the Messiah Complex. And so the question really becomes, do we have to spend time like defining some like pre-Messiah Complex book to squeeze that in? Is, is the fact that it's five issues enough to just slam it into the beginning and keep rolling? Do we ignore it? I think it's kind of the elephant in the room because it's never in any of these recollections. I don't know, Ophel, do you, what do you think about that material? I think you could. My issue with this era is there's so much, and there's so much between each Messiah event that it's hard to decide what to keep and what to cut out. Like a lot of these I had to go, okay, what does this have to do with hope? to decide and for me like i started with endangered species because i felt like just keeping that one shot was enough to jump you into messiah but i feel like if these aren't collected and it's only five issues you probably could because i actually have multiple omnibuses um for this and um i had a really hard time cutting stuff out to try and keep it concise to messiah themed things but 
I feel like depending on everyone else's list, I could easily see that getting collected in this, especially if it's something that's just kind of floating. I, okay, at first I was no on the extremist. But I, the more I think about it, it does kind of tell you why Hepzibah is hanging out with the X-Men, right? Because she's kind of the leftover star jammers from the uh, Rise and Fall of the Shi'ar Empire. And they can give you a quick little blurb as to why what's happening. Um, and then Caliban and all that. So maybe, would that be the only one that you would include leading up to endangered species? Well, you know, there's all sorts of drama from all sorts of people on this topic because the other run that leads up to endangered species that it's hard to know how it would get collected otherwise is, of course, the beginning of Mike Carey's run in what became X-Men Legacy, but at the time was just X-Men Volume 2. Now, they just issued in 2018 a pretty hefty 480-page paperback of that called X-Men Marauders, which collects all of that carry material from where he joins the title in 188 right to the edge of the uh, Messiah Complex with 204, less the backup material that's going to be an endangered species. Now, 480 pages, that's like a third of an omnibus. So it would, it would be a lot to say, hey, we've got to cram this in there. People say, oh, well, there was an oversized hardcover before it was called Supernovas. Ah, but Supernovas did not have the Blinded by the Light arc that closes that out. It stopped early. So again, you know X-Men fans want everything. Do we, we try do. to cram? And a lot of those threads from that run with Rogue, uh, Cable, Mystique absolutely do run-ins in the Messiah Complex. So I think there's a valid, very valid argument out there that this book should actually start with Marauders. Now, I personally think that that's getting a little bit crazy and that's you almost crazy. can like have a road to Messiah Complex omnibus that has extremists and has that Marauders and has some of the other picky, choosy, random stuff in this era. But I'm just trying to be the kind of X-Men fan you want me to be and think God. of everything. <laughs> no, I want you to be yourself. Don't you dare be the <laughs> X-Men fan I want you to be. Uh, but I would. I think I'm gonna veto that. Okay. And, maybe, and I may be alone vetoing that because I think Mike Carey rightly deserves his own omnibus, and that yeah. would. That's where. I mean, you would have to start there. That's yeah. where I would start with Supernovas and uh, Blinded by the Light. So yes. I think I'm okay with the uh, the extremists, right? Is that what it's called? The little tree paper. Yeah. Yeah, the extremists. <clears throat> because then we get. Uh, Divide it, we stand, but that's after Messiah Complex. Right. Ooh, that means we have to do that in aftermath. Okay. Ooh, I don't know if I like that though. It gets messy real fast. Get yeah, ready. I don't. Because like it, it said, it's going to be chaos. Because oh, yeah, the, I just have a list of ones that I wanted but can't. So, like, it's going to be great. <laughs> I can't believe so we, we we haven't even gotten started with the very first issue. With okay, there's a lot if, of caveats because if we include extremists, then we have to include divided by the light because that's collected in nothing, and that's mm -hmm. the. That is the tail end of the Ed Brub That is the final Ed Brubaker story. Before yeah. he co-writes with Fraction for what, Nation X, I think? Yeah, and that's like... Five oh, no, five. Uh, uh, Manifest Destiny, that was it. That's where they were co-writing was Manifest Destiny. So I think... Man, this is a tough call. What do you all think? Yes or no? But are, are we... Are we? Because my, my initial curiosity from everyone was was the thought about the beginning of Brubaker's run. So we're gonna let Sleeping Dogs lie because the beginning of his stuff is cosmic. And we're gonna let those things stay with the War of well, Kings. Unless Marvel decides to double dip, which they're known to do, especially if it's an right. X-Men title. You know what? Let me backtrack. No to extremists, okay? No, Peter. You know why? Put the hammer down. Because, because you're gonna double dip? Because Marvel has a tendency to cash in on mutants. It's called the X-Tax. We pay an extra amount of money for these books because Marvel knows they will sell. And I'm pretty sure there will be an Ed Brubaker collection, which will include Deadly Genesis, which God knows how many times that's been collected in oversized hardcover format. Uh, it will Rise collect Rise and Fall of Shi'ar Empire. It will collect The Extremists and The Divide That We Stand. Well, as well as the we'll Nation just, stuff. Yeah, we'll continue so to disagree as the episode that, okay. goes on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just saying See, that's so that's so messy. Like that just it's sounds messy. Something that they do though. Like it I, is something they do, but it, it's that doesn't mean that they're not messy. Oh, I'm not. Well, I'm and, not. 
And part of the problem is that when they collected the complete collections, we, we well, I swear we're going to start mapping a book soon. When they started collecting the complete collections with the Matt Fraction Complete Collection Volume 1, they started with 500, even though he had already been co-writing with Brubaker before 500, right. which gives us this weird intercession, weird middle stuff from 495 to 499, which is after Messiah Complex and absolutely dealing with things that are coming after Messiah Complex, but it's never been officially collected as Fraction. But if you were to try to like take that away from Messiah Complex and put it in a Brubaker, omnibus but then skip messiah complex then it'll just be a hole and you'll be like what happened so it's just it's messy no matter how you slice it it's messy somebody is asking if peter david watches uh peter david i'm sorry david gabriel watches these i just like to note that our mapping for new mutants volume two was off by one issue okay i'm just gonna say and throw that out there we were off by one issue and, that and was... that, the mapping was on point. <laughs> like we were just off by one issue, and it's not even that significant of an issue. That's and all. I don't know about y'all, but like my mapping for Excalibur Volume Two was super close as well. I think ours was on point, wasn't it? No, we skipped it because we I had already we announced. We had already announced it. So I didn't know about y'all's y'all's notes that you had going into the show before it was announced. But like mine, when it was announced, I looked at it and I was like, oh snap. How can Omar veto someone whose bookshelf is so perfectly just because this man is well organized does not mean that I can't veto him, Michael? I mean, it's like saying just because I'm beautiful, I'm always right. They are disconnected topics. I can be both separately. Also that. All right. So, Odfell, you've been pretty quiet. You want to chime in? Let the boys be quiet for a minute. I mean, are we still talking about what to go before? <laughs> or are we actually- I really don't know what we're talking about. I just wanted to beat up here. Like my first thing is endangered species. So like that's, I don't have anything before that. Cause I, this era is so easy to get nebulous and expand too much. So I tried to really focus on Messiah specifically. And you know, if we end up expanding past that as we talk, I have a list of things I'd like to include, but I really tried to stay focused. So there weren't like a bajillion omnibuses coming out of this. So I just started with oh, there, the there's one shot. There's no billion omnibuses coming out. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, uh, but I just started with the one shot because I felt like dropping right into Messiah is just too direct because you're just dropped into this like burning village. Like, whoa, how did I get here? So I figured at least the one shot, maybe skip. So I went through all my. I have the hardcovers and the trades for like this whole era. So the rest of the endangered species trade is like five issues of Beast and Dark Beast, and I feel like that's not really needed, but at least the one shot I feel like is needed before Messiah. Okay. I think I'm with the lady. I think we skip the Brubaker stuff. Let's jump in with Endangered Species, because another thing we forgot about is that, you know, people that read X-Men comics are pretty smart. For the most part. And are we though? Shut up. Yes, we are. <laughs> ah. uh, and we can figure things out like that. Yeah, we're like, oh, okay, got it. All these things happened before. X-Men in space, cool. <laughs> now, I think that's exactly where I wanted to start was the endangered species. Peter, with his wicked ways, almost tricked me into starting with the <laughs> 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 it he, he See, he knows my word, my trigger words, and one of them is orphaned issues. You can't use that around me. You almost got me with that, man. He like breaks out into hives. He's a physical yeah. reaction. I have to save them. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> gonna save orphans. Them. Yeah, I, I want to make clear. I actually, I think it's a brilliant idea to start with endangered species. I completely okay. agree with Odefell that like you, you kind of need to give like a little warm up act, op opening act for Messiah Complex because it's just such a slam when it starts. And oh, I yeah. think um, I think it's Endangered Species, it's not that long. That's the other thing. People see that it's from a lot of different issues. So they're like, oh, that's a whole crossover into itself. But it was just backup stories. The whole Endangered Species oversized hardcover is only 192 pages. So it's like, really, you can put that in as a prelude and it's not gonna take over the whole book before you actually get to Messiah Complex. Okay, so that's three. Riley, are you okay with starting with endangered species? We're going to have to return to the stuff that came before later. Oh, yeah. We'll That's all I'm going to say. The segment ain't over. We, we, can't, we can't orphan anything. No, this we got my ex. No comic left behind, even Micronauts <laughs> and the X-Men. One day. Anyway, so are we all in agreement with starting with uh, endangered species? Yes. Cool. Isn't that what we said at the beginning, Peter? 
You just threw a wrench in there, man. Well, I mean, if I really wanted to throw wrenches and, and, and blue shells and everything, I would say, shouldn't Endangered Species be the last story in the Road 2 book since it's the backup stories from all the material we keep no, shoving in the Road 2 book? I'm, but that's fine. I'm that's fine. Doing, we can start not, with Endangered Species. I'm not doing Road 2. I really do. I think it starts with Endangered Species. The only argument I could see to not start it with Endangered Species if you is if you're going to call the Road 2 book X-Men Endangered Species for marketing pur purposes. Otherwise, it belongs here. They that, very that's well my could, final word. But I think they'll do X Men Mike Carey, X Men Ed Brubaker. Then that's fine. Let's it's in. We, All we're right. here. Let's go. We got our first <laughs> we got our first book. Twenty five minutes in, our first book. X Men Endangered Species. Is this is it really the whole first book or is this just where we're starting the first no, book? No, this is where our first omnibus is starting. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so do we are we gonna do just the one shot or are we gonna do all the backups? No, the backups. That, the backups okay. are part of that. And how okay, many so we're gonna that? do that was less than two hundred is what, what Peter said. Hundred and something. Okay. As long as somebody's keeping up with the uh, page count, I'll keep up with the uh, putting this up there. All right, endangered species. Which leads us into Oddfell. I have Messiah complex next um i just put it all in order based on what was in order um in the hardcover so it's the one shot and then a couple issues of uncanny uh 492 to 494 then x-men volume 2 205 to 207 then new Mutants. there's two issues there it's 44 and 46 and then x factor 25 27. all right that splices it in order peter thoughts prayer yes. I mean, it's a, it's a perfectly ordered book. There's no fat to trim. That That's it. The question is, what is the next material after Messiah <laughs> Complex in this book? This is, this is where it gets fun. All right. <laughs> so let's talk about this. Because right now, what Odefell has said is uh, that we're going to have all those issues of Uncanny X-Men, <laughs> issues of uh, X-Factor, Adjectiveless X-Men, and New X-Men. Here's what I think should happen. Because this, this, the thing after Messiah Complex, the beauty of it is it spins off into a new era of X Men. So X Men, adjectiveless X Men, becomes X Men Legacy. Mike Carey does his own thing, going back and forth with Professor Xavier. Um, new X Men has a new lineup. And then we get the creation of two new books, one of them being Cable and one of them being X-Force. So here's where I'm going to get crazy. I think this definitely needs Cable. One through six. And I would throw the giant size Cable in there. You're talking to Dwayne Skrzynski? Yes. Because I think it's crucial if we're keeping it in as a Messiah complex trilogy then it needs that. And I would almost go crazier here in a minute, but I want to know everybody's opinion on that. I don't I don't know if it's the same volume, but when I was mapping things, I shoved Cable 1 through 15 into a second omnibus to happen mm -hmm. right before Messiah War. I didn't have it in the first. You had no Cable in the first. Mm -hmm. What... Okay, so we're going to need, I mean, we, we need to pad it out, right? Because this endangered yeah. species and all those issues of uncanny X-Men just aren't enough. I, what do you think, Peter? Why doesn't Riley go before me this time, Riley? Okay, we're going to do that. <laughs> Riley? So, <clears throat> I'm going to say that the easy thing to eliminate from all the, take eliminate things before we decide to put things in. I'm going to say no, uh, I'm not going to put a bunch of X-Factor in there because X-Factor stands on its own. X-Factor uh, in that era needs to be its own thing. And also, uh, again, mentioning Mike Carey, Mike Carey was doing his own thing, Omar, like you said. Yep. Um, so those two books, that's fine. Now, Uncanny X-Men, immediately after, was mentioned earlier, there was the Divided He Stands arc. That, I believe, needs to go in there. So that's what, five issues, six issues that we have <laughs> that would go in? Yeah, that's five issues. What makes you say that? Is this is I mean, aftermath. This oh. is aftermath, and also this is orphaned. 
So this is something that has not been in hardcover before. And I don't think that there's enough other material that I would put in here that could shove it into the next volume, which would tentatively be Messiah War. Okay. Man, that's a tough that's a tough call because if they do an Ed Brubaker omnibus, I expect that to be in the omnibus. I I feel like you need it though, because I have both divided we stand prefix less X-Men and Uncanny. I feel like the prefix less one is less important because it's a lot of the team teams, but I feel like Uncanny is really important because otherwise you're like, why are they in San Francisco? And I feel like you need that to understand Utopia later. So I feel like you really need it. And it's not that long, so it's kind of like, might as well. That's what I have right after Complex, both of the divided. So going into like, um, also having Manifest Destiny, like when they move. Yeah, I have, I think I cut a lot of Manifest specifically, but I kept, um, let's see, what is it? Nation X issue five fifteen and five or five yeah five fifteen and five sixteen, okay. which is them leaving San Fran to Utopia and then Magneto getting back his powers and explaining um, how mm -hmm. he got them from the uh, oh my gosh I'm blanking on his name high evolutionary so, so, yeah high evolutionary mm -hmm. and um, Cyclops telling us about hope because I felt like those two issues from Nation X would do the job that Manifest Destiny could do in less space. So now we're we're barreling right into a good part of uh, Matt Fraction's run at this point. Yeah, and I, I have X Force in the middle too, but as far as like manifest, I kind of just skipped it because I didn't want to overpack these because I wasn't sure how many omnibuses I wanted to. I don't sure. know. That, that, <laughs> well, and that's both the thing with X Men because they're they're unexpected, right? Like I didn't expect them to make an Inferno omnibus that huge. But then they could also sell a 750 page or 600 page omnibus too, because it's X Men. People will buy yeah. it, they, and Marvel knows that. And there's a lot of because uh, there's a lot of tie-ins also yeah. at this time. Oh yeah, the Manifest we, Destiny, Wolverine, Manifest Destiny, all that stuff, and then also Nation X had its own mini series. So you start yeah. you start having to discuss where those go as well. I think for me, the way that I envision this era, that would fit more into an Ed Brubaker omnibus to pad that out. Because let's face it, he didn't write that many issues. It needs the padding out before we get to the Fraction omnibus. I would say in, in, in the way that I envision this is keeping it straight X-Force and Cable because they are the center core of everything that's happening and why it happens it, but that's just my um that's just those are my thoughts what what do you, what do you think peter all right so i, I want to back up for a second here x-men fans being quite crazy and wild um we see marvel do one good thing and we latch onto it and i would say maybe that one good thing is the way that they originally collected things like fall of the mutants and um inferno prologue and inferno where they kind of like mapped across every possible thing every little mini series the way they're doing the marvel masterwork where even long shot is included and we get really addicted to that but that's not generally how they do these modern omnibuses. And I, I want to distinguish between like the multiple tracks of things that we're talking about here. So the thing that Omar is talking about, I'm starting to understand why I couldn't understand what we're going to be talking about in this episode. Oh. You're almost talking about that omnibus they did of the um, the Infinity Saga, where it was like all of the Infinity things, but it wasn't like their tie-ins or anything. It was like, if you like Thanos and Infinity, Infinity stuff, buy this omnibus. It wasn't a um, complete book. So the crazy people among us that would have gone for things like the Infinity Crusade omnibus were like, that's a pass. But the people are like, it's fine for me to just have the core Infinity Crusade story and you know get all the Infinity stuff lined up. That's a buy. I think that's a good thing. I'm not like a... Um, a fan who needs everything to be for completist fans only. I think it's fine that there's a Dark Phoenix omnibus. Not everybody needs to read everything in Uncanny X-Men by Claremont Volume 1. Sometimes I say to people, just buy the Dark Phoenix omnibus. That's the thing I'm pretty sure you're talking about. So that's one perspective. And mm -hmm. if we're taking that perspective, 
then I get this, yeah, then only put in the things that are key, right? Put in the issue where Cyclops is um, talking to Wolverine about X-Force out on the balcony and then put in the scene that happens after that in X-Force, right? That's one kind of omnibus. But then the other omnibus that's possible is the whole like every thread, every line kind of omnibus. And if you look at it that way, it's like there's the potential for an uncanny X-Men line of omnibuses here that don't really need Cable or X-Force in with them because Cable and X-Force have their own stories. There's the potential for a Cable line, an X-Force line, a legacy line, um, you know, the Academy X line, which would have ended, but then there's things like Young X Men and Pixie Strikes Back and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's I, the danger is like I, I'm not sure which line we're actually mapping right now. Personally, okay. I want to map the everything in line because that's who I am. And for the everything in line, I think you go from Endangered Species to Messiah Complex to Divided We Stand. And then you, um, at that point, you're at 700 pages ish, if you include all the minis that Riley just mentioned. And then you make the call of if it's 700 pages and that's enough for an X Men fan to buy anyway, even with the X tax on it, or if you push forward to include the Manifest Destiny stuff to set up kind of the end of their move to um, San Francisco, which throws in another 500 pages and brings us to a perfect 1200 page omnibus. I don't think Cable has any place in it. Cable, as it's been collected in the complete collection, shows that it works by itself as two books. Um, X-Force, as it's been collected in the complete collection, shows that it works by itself. Why, why mess with a map that's already been established by Marvel? Because I like to think outside the box. Because I think it is important for the next part of this. For, for what is known as the next you know, f the follow-up to the Messiah complex. I mean, it does have the Messiah name in the title. So the reason I decided I wanted to include things like Cable and X-Force in this is because if Marvel were to to rebrand this and make Messiah complex available again for people to purchase, then they're going to have, then they're going to want to make an omnibus. They're not going to reprint an oversized hardcover as we've seen in the cases of Fall the Mutants. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not announcing anything. Uh, Inferno, <laughs> in, the, in the cases of Mutant Massacre, so it's it's happened before. So uh, prelude to the uh, to Inferno or Inferno Prologue. So in order for them to do that, they would have to add things in, and I think one of the most obvious choices, because I really do think that X Men, or I like to think, will be eventually all collected in chronological order in omnibus format, and one of them will be the Ed Brubaker run and the Matt Fraction run. And I think those will have the uh, Manifest Destiny and Nation X stuff, whereas this focuses more on X Horse and Cable and Bishop, because they play a big important part in all of this, all the way up to the Second Coming. I agree, but I feel like you need a little bit. That's why like, I didn't put it all, but I had like at least two issues from Nation X. I had X-Force like 1 through okay. 13 and two X-Men Legacies. I feel like you need to sprinkle it in so it still makes sense for a reader, but you don't need to include all of it if you're theming this to be specifically Messiah. Okay. But I mean, and you could put Cable in the first one too. I started the second one with it because I figured like starting with Cable right into messiah war made sense but it happens almost the same time as x-force so you could splice them but i had kind of the first one being you know messiah complex divided x-force and then a couple x-men legacies and ending with uh two issues from nation x and then the next one starting with cable okay so you didn't throw in all of nation x in there you just threw in a couple of yeah. what yeah. you think is necessary all so, right so, Peter, any wiggle room there? Or are you set on this all all or nothing uncanny concept? Yeah, I would never buy this book. I mean, I, would, I wouldn't touch it. Well, it's you're not a target audience, okay? I clearly am not. I'm talking about... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep your Marvel Masterworks away from my omnibus. All right. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I want to be really clear. I have reverence for that X-Force run. I think it's an amazing run. I think it gets X-Force totally right. Like, I'm excited. But if we're going to keep talking about Messiah trilogy, I'm going to make my next bold statement. Messiah War has nothing to do with the other Messiah. It has nothing to do with Messiah Complex. It has nothing uh, to do with Second Coming. It's just a little fun with Strife and Deadpool in the middle to get Cable to sell more copies so that it would make it to 24 so that they could get Hope back into Uncanny X-Men. There is no reason that anybody who wants to read messiah complex and second coming needs messiah war I, unless I agree, I agree they want to read x-force i agree with you but it's oh, also part, but, but it's also part of x-force right yeah. also, yes it's a big part of x-force 
And then then this is the division. Like, what happens? Do do we keep make do we make two X Force Omnis? Or do we make it all part of this? Because I think it has a better chance of selling X Force by Kyle and Yost to just label it X Men. You don't think it would sell as X Force? I think X Force has its name. I I think it would. It would definitely leave out things like Cable. Like it would definitely leave out Cable and Bishop. And that's my problem because I think those issues. You know, I think they help the experience. They're not the greatest issues. I'm not the biggest fan of that. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of the ending of Messiah Complex to begin with. I have my biggest issues with this, but I also know. This is an era that a lot of fans like. Oh, that's almost bringing me around to maybe just putting, just mushing Cable and X Force into, so that you can sell it as Cable and X Force, which maybe even has more selling power than just X Force by itself, and certainly more than Cable would by itself. And I mean, it's it's probably too big to do all as one, but you could pretty much do like an X Force and Cable Volume One that has everything up to that, and then an X Force and Cable Volume Two. I think there's. I don't think that we have to be so prescriptive that each thing just has to have its own title. But I think Cable and X Force interplay more than X Force interplays with Uncanny. Yeah, because I, I think about the Necro. Because it's not until Second Coming that all of it starts coming together. Right. And for some reason, I see Second Coming. Who helmed Second Coming? Wasn't that Colin Yost? Weren't they the it's everybody. Players? It's Fraction, Kyle and Yost, Carrie, yeah, but, but, and Peter you David. Know what I'm, you know what I'm asking? Yeah. Like every 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 event has one person. Like this is what oh, like the, I think it's Fraction. Yeah, <laughs> I think so too. Fraction, no, no. And way. let me just point out that the Kyle and Yost omnibus, even if it just had the export stuff and Messiah were not the extraneous Necrotia stuff, is okay. already an 1130 page book. So I'll like, buy. I'll buy yeah, two. I mean we we would all buy. It. But the question is, does it to everybody's point? do we abandon stuff by just making it X-Force, right? If we're putting on the David Gabriel hat, the Marvel hat, we do have to kind of think like, not only do we, what do we want to read, but how do we make sure nobody's left behind? And I think that's a good point. Okay. Then let's go back to what you guys were saying. Damn it. I can't believe you guys are talking me into this. Let's scrap <laughs> the X-Force idea. I don't know about Cable. I'm not sold on that yet. See, I have that and then messiah war at the beginning of the second trade because i think it's a slower kind of weaker story and then i ended it with second coming to kind of big bang at the end because i tried to keep it to two because i'm like if they're doing messiah omnibuses i feel like two is the max limit what people would want to buy so i kind of sliced everything else out that wasn't to do with that as much for like a hypothetical like what could be like road to abx trade because there's so much in the middle there that has more to do with the Avengers and tension with the Avengers that just doesn't need to happen for you to understand Second Coming. So for me, I kind of just, I did Cable and, and War at the beginning. Okay. So that's where I was going, Peter. But one other thing I was going to say is if you put the title Messiah, the Messiah Trilogy on these X-Men books, people will buy all three. I mean, that's just the way mar- I mean, it's marketing. I mean, that's how it works, right? You give me a Messiah trilogy, I will buy all three of those books. That's why I think I had wiggle room in there for X-Force and Cable, including Messiah War and uh, Necrotia leading up to Second Coming. Well, could we have issues 1 through 10 of Cable since the, the crossover is 11 through 15? Could we have all of 1 through 10 in... The first volume. I don't. Um, if we can talk Peter into letting us. Dad. <laughs> You're, by the way, guys, by the way, this is how it really works. David gets into so many arguments with Corey over covers, over mapping, <laughs> and it's amazing how it works. Like, this is, this is actually how it works. Like, sometimes they get mad at each other. And at the end of the day, they have to agree. And then David says, you know what? I'm David Gabriel. No, we're not doing that. that. (laughs) So, Peter, what do you think? I think if I can let go of completionist Peter for just a second and talk about, like, what do we truly need to get to Second Coming? Because that's our goal, right? Like, to finally wind up at Second Coming in this conversation. Going from Messiah Complex to Second Coming. I think of all of that canny material... You're going to have to have Utopia, because if you don't... Ex- yeah. 
for okay. why they're on the little island. Second coming doesn't make any sense. And you're probably going to have to have some elements of Nation X, my favorite runs. I know people don't really love it because it explains the whole getting like backed into a corner on the island. So like I, I can definitely see an argument where you put that in like a Messiah trilogy and then you leave the other stuff for like a fraction book that maybe cuts off right at Utopia. Yeah. And then maybe the last book in this is kind of like the utopia to second coming slice if that's what we're talking about that actually makes a degree of sense and i get it i think i have like seven omnibuses mapped here that i'm trying to fit into three omnibus sack and it's clearly not going to work so i've got to let you. some stuff go it. if we're going to stick it. with the concept so sometimes you got to let those you know your favorites go man uh, uh but um okay could so i overall, suggest how then... does your second book end well no, we're not going could, yet, are we i so i only had two omnibuses because Everything I cut out, I was like, this would be great in an Avengers versus X-Men omnibus because a lot of Nation X and Utopia is just focusing on that in the Dark Avengers. Yeah. So really, true, true. most of what I took from those books was like one or two issues that was enough for you to understand, like they're on an island, like this is the yes. tension. So like I only ended up with two. And I ended um, the second omnibus. I, I had parts of Necroche. I didn't know how much to include because I this one got really big for me because I kept a rough like page number count. But um, I ended it with Second Coming Revelations with all the one shots. There's like four, no, three one shots. No, two one shots, a three part mini, and then two or three issues of X Factor. And then the very last book I put in was. Um, Uncanny X-Men 526 to 529. Which is kind of just like an end cap on like, oh, things are looking up. Um, and that's that's where I cut it, because I'm like, if I go too far, then it's just gonna keep going. Yeah, you can always add more. Uh okay, Let, let's go back to this first book because we we we've just agreed on this, is all we've agreed on. And all of this, I just need to remind everybody, is just endangered species and messiah complex. Can we? What's the page count on just those two? You're the page count guy, man. You should have had I, that I can before you asked. Okay, I'll look into I got it. it. Hold on. Somebody I counted know. pages, but I don't know if I counted pages right because I don't know if you count like each art page or each physical page. Mm -hmm. Those those two together are seven hundred and two pages. That's okay. with the extras, I'm sure, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so. That's with the extras, correct? I'm sure. Yeah, I, I base it on collections rather than single issues. Actually, okay. you know what? Hold on. Am I lying? I might be lying. No, I'm not lying. That's right. So 700 okay. pages. We got... No, I am lying because I'm still included divided, my, divided We Stand and you're not. Without I mean, divided My Stand... No, 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 no. It was X... Na I thought it was uh, Nation X that we were including some issues of that. Material from, right? Yeah, just Endangered Species and Messiah Complex together are 582 pages. Okay, we got wow. plenty of room to fill this out. Okay, so I, I want to make a, let me throw this out there. We have this book, this first one, this is Messiah Complex Omnibus. Now, the whole crux of everything that we entered in here discussing was X-Force. The X-Force, yeah. this deserves its own book. This series deserves its own book. I'm mm -hmm. going to say that I think anyone who has read it and enjoyed it like I have would agree with that. I don't think it needs to be titled or subtitled anything to connect it with the others. Just because, as had been discussed, Messiah War is very much an event for them. That's an event for X Force and Cable. So I would suggest that, and the reason why I said, you know, can we put 10 issues of Cable in this book or in somewhere else is we because we can. Over. We can have just the crossover here. How much material would it be basically to just have these four hardcovers? as one omnibus can we put all of that into one hardcover like Necro page wise it would probably be close yeah and now necrotia we could even take out the x-men legacy paid or issues some of those yeah, crossover you issues if you'd want because no. they're they work better with that title that could be a standalone title just called x-force include the issues of cable and did was deadpool in there too it was no, there was no issues yeah. of Deadpool. He just appeared. He just but appeared. it was uh, it would be issues 
So the first hardcover is 1 through 11 of X-Force and the X-Force special Ain't No Dog. The second hardcover has 12 and 13, as well as 17 through 20, Annual 1, and then Sex and Violence 1 through 3. And then the crossover has Life and Times of uh, Lucas Bishop 1 through 3, Cable 11 through 15, that's what crosses over, X-Force 14 through 16, and then the one-shot for Messiah War and Future History Messiah War source book. And then there's the Necrotia stuff, which has uh, New X-Men 32, uh, X-Force New Mutants, Necrotia, Necrotia the Gathering, X-Force 11, and 21 through 25. So there's one double dip issue. Uh, X-Men Legacy 231 to 234, New Mutants 6 through 8, and Material from Annual Number 1. I'd almost say, okay, uh, Bishop is collected in that, right? Like the miniseries, the three-issue mm -hmm. miniseries? Yes, that's in the, the oversized hardcover for Messiah War. Okay. I think yeah, that's, that's almost a second option. Listen and, and I, watching. You haven't read it for a while or have read it at all. It's very decomposable. Like, you can take it apart. Um, it, yeah. it was reissued, taken apart. Legacy got its own Negrosha collection. And they complete collection to X-Force. They didn't put the New Mutants and the um, Legacy issues in. So you do not need... It's not a traditional crossover. It's much more like no. a Fall of the Mutants, where everything's kind of on its own track. So it's perfectly if fine to do case, parts of Negrosha just with X-Force. We, we know that they can leave out X-Men Legacy, then. Yes. We, yes. We're pretty 100%. sure that that will, be, that will be its own thing. And so, would you say leave out New Mutants as well? I think Peter said, yeah, you could do that. You could you could also leave out New Mutants. Because if we're titling, we're not titling it X-Force Necrotia Omnibus. It would be X-Force by Kyle and Yost Omnibus. How? Okay, good God. I can't believe we're doing this. But how many pages would that Omnibus be if we took out those issues? The X Force by Kyle and Yost Omnibus mapped exactly just from the actual X Force series and the necessary Messiah War and Necrotia stuff, including Lucas Bishop, is 1136 pages. Yeah. That right. is without endangered species, without Messiah Complex, just X Force and important taggers along. God bless. I hate to include 10 issues of cable, though, in, in the first omnibus of Messiah Complex just to but, get that reprinted. But, but. That there can be another, there can be one more. We can have something between because if you're doing a Messiah Complex omnibus and then later doing something, I would assume Second Coming omnibus, there can still be something between. It doesn't have to be Messiah. Well, that, that's uh, where that's where I thought X Force would be. X Force would be the the book that kind of right. And I, I know that's what you had thought, but now we're eliminating that. Now we're turning that into its own book because I believe that that book deserves that respect to have its own omnibus and then this middle portion this could be all of that important stuff that happens with the mutants all the things you know the the transitionary period every storyline that we're talking about with them you know moving coast to coast getting onto the island everything that happens to them th that can be here man any I, 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 relevant okay. material I, I see what you're saying and i see what peter's saying but i'm going to tell you right now I don't know if that's going to fly too well with collectors if you take out X-Men Legacy and New Mutants from the Necrotia crossover. They've already done it in the complete collections. It's already yeah. happened. Yeah. But Those if, are the ones I if, have, and I have to it, have like everything else around it. It's, it's an oversized format, and it's all in one. Damn. But it has nothing to do with the X-Force story. Like, they don't appear at no, all. But they the, appear, New they Mutants, you could argue New Mutants God. kind of, like, affects the story because of who they fight and the fact that the fight is on Utopia. But in Legacy, Rogue takes an away team to Muir Isle to fight an awakened Proteus. Like, it's so yeah. off to the well, side. Well, I was going to say, they, they appear in the yeah. one shot. They appear in the one shot, and I think that kind of leads people into thinking, oh, okay, well, this is going to be something else. But it's like, it's, it's like six or seven issues. You If you needed to... We were less than 1,100 pages. You could add those in there, and it would still be somewhere close to like 1,200 or so. So it's not I, like it would inflate too much. I think whichever book has complex needs, I think, let me check on the number. It's Legacy Legacy 215, because it's like the closure on Rogue just like slapping the stick in the face. But otherwise, you could put Legacy anywhere. Which is great, but you don't Yeah. <laughs> but, like, it's, it's them talking, and it's, like, if, if not, you're going to be, like, wait, they they fixed things. Last I saw, she stormed out. But, I mean, other than, like, that, and I think I had one other, like, you could really plop Legacy anywhere. Um, that is a huge omnibus. And are, are we taking out the second coming issues of X-Force? 
in that. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't put Second Coming in there because no, the that's a coming, true direct crossover. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Let's, okay. So let's. I I kind of like that. That and and honestly, that's a really good map. If it's an export thing, that kind of gives us some wiggle room with these other books. But then we would only. I think then we would just be down to two omnis, right? The Messiah, Messiah Complex, and Second Coming. If X Force is its own omnibus, then we would have issues of cable connecting the two. You could brand them them as still a three, probably somehow. Unless you want to, yeah. Because you, but you could, or like I said, you could. You have a lot of material between the two events. That's not Messiah War. You do that material. It almost feels like a mesh, right? It almost feels like. (sighs) I mean, and and there's been instances where they've just thrown things together before mm-hmm. for completion and they've, so, done, and they've done that with x-men done it with many Europe times destruction and they've done it with shatter shot okay all right all right so i feel like you could have something that would be titled like x-men manifest destiny or x-men nation x that would have all of that material between those events and that way someone if there are people who are collecting these and reading these storylines for the first time you have the material between the events so you you know what happened you know what they've gone through in these years between okay well really quick and then we can uh get peter's opinion there's uh there's one thing that uh marvel has figured out and that is that not everybody gets everything like people just get x-men titles especially in omnibus format. That's why they're releasing six to eight a month because they realize that, oh, not everybody's buying books in omnibus format. So the people that are buying X-Men, they're just buying X-Men. People that are buying, and, and there's people that only bought Excalibur and not bought New Mutants and vice versa. So I'm thinking of those people from a marketing standpoint, because I know this is silly, but X-Force would sell. Mm-hmm. Damn. Okay, let's go back to the first book and wrap that one up first. What 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 are we in agreement with besides all the stuff from the previous books that we talked about? What uh what did you all want me to add to this? Was it the uh, Nation X issues with material from Nation X? Which issues were they, Odd Phil? Um, I had I think two issues. Let me see. It was. I just had 515 and 516 because it's Magneto getting his powers back and then leaving San Fran for Utopia. But that only makes sense if we have Divided We Stand to set up that they went to San Fran. So Otherwise, we, both are unneeded. So right now we still have 500 pages, right? 500 and some pages. So how do we fill this one up? Give it a, Give it cable or... We could. I had X Force one through thirteen, but if we're doing that on its own thing, I think I think Riley's right on that. I think it deserves yeah. its own omnibus. But I'm I'm still with Cable. Peter, what yeah. do you think? Cable? No Cable? I Keep just, in mind, we, we're trying to reprint a book that's an OHC that will never see reprint, and the only way to do it is to make it an omnibus. How do we fatten it up? I just, it's its just hard for me to say because we're making arbitrary decisions about like what must fit in and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like to me, Rogue Story is a huge part of this and Legacy. Legacy is very separate from all of these, but then you get to Second Coming and it rewards a lot of stuff about Rogue. But we're right now really concerned about getting Cable and X-Force in. I, I would maybe even take a different perspective that I'm more interested in getting Uncanny X-Men and, and Legacy. And so I just feel like I'm, I'm so divergent from this at this point that all I can do is kind of like offer page counting. Um, I, I, I just would never buy this book. It's ridiculous. I think at least bare minimum, Legacy 215 needs to be in there. Would you buy this book if you're missing Mutant, uh, the Messiah Complex hardcover from your collection? And it's labeled. I've got Marvel book. Unlimited. If they want to put out shit maps, they can oh put my shit gosh. maps out until the until Are you like, going to shit maps? Come home. Done. All right, fine. No cable? <laughs> really? That's what's turning you off? Man. Peter, where where do you think? Okay, so Peter, do you agree about X Force getting its own book? 
I think there is an X Force omnibus okay. to be sold. I think okay. it, I think it's okay. sellable. I think it's a, no, you, the only you argument I would throw in there is: Do you take that opportunity to also sell cable alongside with X Force, so you don't mm -hmm. maroon cable on to you know to never sell its own omnibus? That was that was going to be part two question. Like where where otherwise would you? Because I don't think that I don't think it'd sell as well if we split it in two and made it like cable and X Force because. Cable just doesn't sell as well as X-Force does. Yeah, it's a fact. And also having it all in one, an all in one book is going to be more attractive to people than having to worry about two. Mm -hmm. um, so what what would, what would do you think would be the best thing to do to make sure that Cable does, because Cable is important here. He does have a story that ties into everything that's going on. What, what do you think would be the best solution for that series? Because, and I think it's important because you, you're following this new baby. Right, right. Like she, she is important. And yeah, but it I, ultimately doesn't matter. Like everything that happens to Hope I, in the future, I, I like know. It's, it's, no, you're absolutely you know, pat. It's pat. Yeah. It's lone wolf and cub in the future. I get it. Right, I, exactly. I, <laughs> I, by the way, I, I I am arguing for the sake of arguing because as a completist, I have to. I also was not the biggest fan of this era because like, yeah, it was lone wolf and cub. Nothing original came from this, and they made Bishop into a villain that would just show up randomly from time to time. It was ridiculous, yeah. but. I also know this stuff will sell because people will want it. So I think it makes logical sense to put it in this book. And then the bookend will be second coming where, where, where she is grown up and we spoilers in case you haven't read second coming, we say goodbye to cable again. And she's holding his arm. I, yeah, I feel like if, if we're collecting this and we're, we're doing complex and we're doing second coming, Messiah War has to be there, even though I, I too think it is, it is very weak. That's why I wanted it at the beginning, because I feel like to end an omnibus with it, it's just going to peter out really bad, because, like, you're just not going to want... I don't know, it's not a strong story, but I feel like to start one with that and then end it with something like Second Coming, it would be, like, a nice kind of upward swing of plot um, and be more balanced, but I feel like it has to be there, even though it is just kind of like a lull. Okay. I, I I think that's one I'm standing my ground on. I, I, I can give you the X-Force Omnibus. That's cool. I get it. That would sell on its own. You're right. You're absolutely right. But I don't think Cable would sell on its own. And I think Cable no. would be, the, to me at least, the, the most logical point to put it in this Omnibus and then the tail end and the second coming Omnibus. Just to show that progression of hope. Go from baby to teenager. If we're taking X Force out of it, then I agree. Like, if if that's going to be like not included, then I think, yeah, it should it should be like that. And I'm okay so adding how much? other things. Like, I mean, if we do cable one through ten, how many issues? Or I'm sorry, how many pages is that? What are we What are we looking at? Because we have five hundred and something pages, and if we add cable one through ten, that still gives us some wiggle room, right? To add in things like you all wanted, uh, the the buy that we stand. I'm sorry, not divided we stand, but uh, no, no, divided we stand. I'm looking into page counts. Um. All right, so just those two paperbacks for cable one to 10 on their own without any other stuff in them were 128 and 176, so 134, 204, 304. It's only 304 pages. Okay, so it's barely anything, right? Barely anything. You could probably go to 15. I don't know what happens in the next five, but that's in the oversized hardcover for Messiah where it goes to 15. If you wanted padding. Well, isn't uh, Cable 11 through 15 part of the Messiah War? Um, it, I'm not sure on that. I just have yeah, like 1 it, through 15 I, as being in mind, so I'm not sure where that starts. It is. It's part of the Messiah War, and if Riley wants to make his X-Force Omnibus, then... I think those need to be in there. They're uh, actually, they're part, they are collected with Messiah War, but 11 and 12 are not actually part of Messiah War. Okay. So you could go up to 12. Okay. If we go up to 12, that gives us just a little breathing room in the Messiah War for covers or whatever. Or I'm sorry, the X-Force Omnibus. Yeah. So you get rid of two issues in... X-Force, 
So yeah, if we want to have <laughs> so much cable in one omnibus, though, Ugh. Peter, just out of curiosity, what was your idea for this uh, for the first <laughs> omnibus? Just, I, I want to hear what you thought first. I I thought that this first omnibus would focus on Uncanny X-Men and it would take us from endangered species either to 499 right before the Manifest Destiny stuff or it would take us to 503, which is the first little hunk of Manifest Destiny stuff. It would include Divided We Fall or Stand and it would include the Manifest Destiny um, like side series one-shotty stuff. And, uh, and that would kind of set us up for a perfect big hunk of second fraction omnibus to take us through... Um, maybe not all the way to second coming, but it, doable. Because you're thinking of this as an X-Men event, so you're focusing on the X-Men heavy titles. Like yeah, and I'm all, I mean, I also kind of looked at how they've mapped the complete collection so far, and that, like, mm -hmm. there's the Fraction Completes, the Cable Completes, the X-Force Completes, and then Legacy Hasn't Had Completes. There was Academy X Completes, but they stopped before they put Young X-Men in them. Um, there has been a New Mutants, I think, by Zeb Wells Complete at this point. So mm -hmm. I was kind of just going by lines, because that's, you know, I, my mind clearly works very much like that. Okay, you know what? I'll give you that. If you give me Cable and X Force, two books. I think that makes a heck of a lot of sense. If you give me two books called X Force and Cable, because we can't call it, let, let, let's change it up a little bit because there's a Cable and X Force book. But if you give me two Omnis called X Force and Cable, then we can focus on the stuff that you're talking about. I think that's the easiest way to sell the Cable material and to make it satisfying. I think so um, too. At the end, I do. Because, because I, what, you what, get what, this oh, cool. You, 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 oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say what turned me off was having twelve issues of Cable in a Messiah complex. Oh no! Oh no! I could do and six, I, but that's back in my head when I was thinking. Well, maybe we could work X Force in there and Cable. But if we're gonna do that, if we're gonna have an X Force omnibus, then might as well have two. Call it X Force and Cable. Include Bishop, uh, the miniseries in there. Call it a day. Then yeah, we can go back on the Messiah complex. You can do still six issues of cable in the in the tail end of that book and if you go into a middle volume like i was saying before you can have the next six issues in there so then you're not having a dozen issues a large chunk of cable all in one place because also like yeah to sell the issues you're talking about putting them together with x-force but that this series is largely very it stands alone like it's not like he's interacting with x-force throughout this entire thing he interacts yeah. with them for a few issues I, I i know but but it also would not stand on its own it's not the greatest series no but and i'm not saying it needs to stand on its own i'm saying like instead of putting 12 whole issues in one book you piecemeal it you put six issues at the aftermath of uh, Messiah complex, and then in another volume, you put a few more issues, and then in another volume, put a few more issues. Yeah, and that final so, cable arc really could go into whatever volume has second coming because it's pro literally the process of him finally getting the timing right on his little chrono thing and getting hope to the present day, which like feeds right into second coming. So, yeah, yeah you could I, take the perspective of like slice and dice cable and just like spread it around as much as possible to get these books to work and to give people their secret medicine of, of cable with the spoonful of sugar of X Men and X Force. I mean, it, it's a perfectly good strategy. But here's my question for you, Omar ha Can you give us an, an example of a time that Marvel has done that in another collection? Or is this completely unprecedented? I'm happy to think outside the box, as a lot of X Men mappers are, but I think we sometimes get gun shy because we're like, Okay, but th this is like so intelligent and X fans would like it, but David Gabriel and the crew would never think this way. You know, they're totally against this idea of piecemealing a series. Can it be done? I'm trying to think of what series was left out that, and I'm still mad that they have left out the Black Sun Magic series, by the way. I'm still mad that they left Avengers World out of the Hickman omnibuses. I get mad about all sorts of omnibuses. Well, that could have been a angry. companion omnibus. But anyway, let's go back to this really quick. <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the way that they've mapped things in the past and when they brought it back, right? Like with Mutant Massacre, they added issues of X-Factor in oversized format to pad that out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if, they, if they've done it. And... And I'm, I'm kind of leaning more now towards what you guys have said. If Riley's talked me into an X-Force omnibus, 
then Cable belongs with them. Because those are, while they're not tied heavily together, they kind of belong together because I don't see Cable being collected anywhere else. And I think it's important for the journey of hope. So for the people that want to know about hope, they follow the X-Force and Cable Omnibus. That's just the way I would map it. Then we can focus back on this and make it just X-Men. Because yeah. people will want to buy an X-Men Omnibus based on the name X-Men. They don't want to follow Cable's adventures for 12 issues with a little redheaded baby. Yeah, and like, you know, he was in one Deadpool movie years ago. Like, you know, we know Marvel puts out Omnibuses a lot of times to market to what's happening in other media. So unless there's going to be a Deadpool 3 with Cable, like, who's out there excited for a Cable Omnibus? Right. All right. So. Are Let's, we okay I think what we should do. Is, what do you guys think? I'm, I'm, I'm never going to be okay with that. So what we should do is just forget yeah. that Cable exists until we finish mapping everything else. <gasps> and then if it can fit anywhere else, we'll revisit that. But you're, just, this, you're, you're selling two Omnis, this, man. People will buy this it. Book, no, that this this book is a pox on X Force. That's what this is. That because no, Messiah I, I War is a you. low point. Like you're because now you're forcing a focus on a low point instead of focusing on the high. And so you're you're focusing on seeing like I've seen custom maps that divided into two, and I'm like, oh, this is disgusting. Like the <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> yes. Like why wow. would you want to put? something like this in with such a wonderful series a, a beautiful series like x-force by kyle and yost it's it's so delicious on its own you don't i, I, I will say anything. because it almost has the same kind of flavor with the art style olivetti and and, and, and uh who was it uh clayton, clayton crane crane have this almost european painted uh heavy metal kind of yeah art. Well, and they, I think that kind of ties we have that. And, but, and, I'm also, and I'm also thinking, like, Marvel, let's make two instead of one and get money. Because people will still buy it. Just saying. All right, let's 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 focus back on the first omnibus. Odfell, you haven't talked for a minute. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you think uh, should be? Now that we've, let's say Cable doesn't exist and, and, and X-Force doesn't exist. And the, they are its own thing, right? I Yeah, so I would probably... Wait how much legacy is in there then because I cut a lot of legacy out trying to make space for X-Force and Cable when I was doing this so I'd probably include like legacy 213 through 16 which is all about Xavier and Cyclops' relationship maybe even the unlikely saga of Xavier one shot is one that I had as a potential um you could throw in things like, uh, I think 208 through 210 is also part of one of the Divided series. You could add that. Um, you could add, there's a couple one-shots. Um, the Free Comic Book Day one-shot from 2008 also deals with Manifest Destiny stuff. You could throw that in. There's a lot of one-shots that I cut out to make space that I feel like you can now kind of backfill because a lot of them tie in with X-Men Legacy. Gentlemen, thoughts, prayers. We definitely need prayers. Look, I think the Xavier. <laughs> I think the Xavier stuff is really well set up by Messiah Complex. I mean, it literally spins out of Messiah Complex. He got shot in the head, and his brain is falling apart, both literally and figuratively. So, I think if we're trying to talk about like rewarding readers for reading Complex and doing something out of the box, yeah, it does kind of make sense to get the initial Professor X stuff into this book because that's the thing that unfurls from this. So, I think you can make a really good argument that this book should have divided we sand, and then the Professor X stuff, which does include a brief crossover in Original Sin with Wolverine Origins, um, and then that's that's what this in, that's what this Endangered Species Messiah Complex book. It's everything going to shit for the X Men. Everything Don't, gets wrecked. It's dire. It's take awful. My Messiah Complex Omnibus with Daniel Way. How dare you? <laughs> You, but I think, but I think overall, is a great point. Like if we if we put away there. our preconceived notions about like books must be this or that plots must be this, and we just think about like what would be satisfying to read in this book, forgetting that any of the books have any title on them at all, you would pick the Xavier stuff because it actually mm -hmm. continues the plot of Messiah Complex. Yeah, because it was it was all stuff I had in originally, and then I cut it out because I'm like, no, I'm like it gets too far away from the whole plot, and the next one I had starting with War. But I think if we're shifting things around, I absolutely would backfill with a lot of the Xavier stuff, especially like if you go back up, um, 
Legacy 216 is just an amazing, like, that would be one I definitely want. And it's just an amazing slam of Emma just absolutely reading Xavier. And, like, things like that, I feel like you could really just bookend this whole thing, like, just Xavier plot. Because there's so much that just deals with him, deals with Cyclops, deals with their falling out, deals with him becoming a leader that you could just completely build on. Man, this book is hard to fill. I didn't know we were going to be discussing it for so long. <laughs> we're still, we still haven't mapped out the first omnibus. That's crazy. We were, what's that word? Divided we stand, Peter. <laughs> How ironic. Uh, shit. Well, what's the, what would be the best transition you know point what? into kinda... another book? Actually, you know what? I'm okay with putting Legacy and Uncanny in there because most of the time, they're going to double dip anyway. We're going to buy the damn book if it's Messiah Complex Omnibus because it's out of print. It's hard to find. You're going to buy it no matter what issues they pad it out with, whether it's Cable, whether it's Nation X, or issues of... And if I want it padded out, if a Cable and X-Force is going to happen, then I want it padded out with the issues that were orphaned. So... Yeah, and I think that there's another subtle genius to this too, which is that after the Xavier period uh, um, with that issue that Ophel just mentioned kind of ends in Legacy, then mm -hmm. it really starts becoming a Rogue book. And I feel yes, like at is. this point, Rogue maybe could sell an omnibus with her name on it, and the rest of Legacy isn't as integrated. So the problem I always have whenever I try to map this, and I've been trying to do it for a decade now, is like, oh. how, how, do you, how do you sell somebody the first omnibus of legacy knowing it pivots hard from being this like xavier book to a rogue book halfway through and the answer is you don't you just put the xavier stuff in this other book scott and emma both show up in the original sin it ends perfectly along with the cutoff for manifest destiny then the rogue stuff gets to live on its own and you get to start the next book clean with manifest destiny just like the fraction complete collections i think odville has dragged us across the finish line to logic right now <laughs> by putting the, the the legacy stuff into this book Speaking of orphan issues, because I did make a note of it, and since we ended up putting some of the new uh, X-Men issues in, issue 43 of new X-Men is orphaned between trades, um, between Messiah Complex and Endangered Species. So that's one that we could yep, You had me an orphan, girl. Which, wh uh -huh. what is she? Say the number again. Uh, new X-Men Volume 2, issue 43, is lost between Messiah Complex and Endangered Species, at least according to both my hardcovers. Wait a minute now. I am troubled by this news. So, I mean, it's one issue, but if we're, like, chunking it, that's one we could put in. Uh, Although yeah. people keep Literally. asking to see my sword. So, <laughs> <laughs> I keep looking over and seeing it, so I'm like, I love that. I'm so glad that Riley's wearing shorts. I thought they were boxers, but thank you, Riley. But, yeah, I keep You're looking welcome. over in chat, and I'm like, okay, I will grab my sword. So, All right, really quick, this is my there it is. buddy Kenny. Love this guy. Can you say my opinions? Most omnibus should be the main title, and only a few miniseries put in that volume. Which is which goes back to what these fine people were trying to tell me. No more cable. We've taken cable out of the equation. So, so forty three was at least in here in the complete collection. Yeah. So okay, forty three cool. is also in the, in the small trades. Covers, and I'm like, yeah. where did it go? Uh, forty three is also in the trades. So, okay, let's put X Men Legacy. Let's put divided. We stand. Nation. So Act. how many? How many issues then? What? Oh, I'm gonna go grab another beer while you guys agree <laughs> with me. God, I feel like Peter. I need three. You, you're gonna need some more drinking, man. <laughs> Odell, you're a, you're a godsend uh, for putting up with us. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. You this were like, I'm putting in here. I got an idea, and Peter and I were like, no. We're I'm a, awful we're at interjecting, but I'm sitting here like. <laughs> we, are, we are so we are so schism and like we're, I clearly we're have wired. a favorite. So this is my era. So I'm totally fine shoving legacy in because my boy shines. Cyc Cyclops your dude. It's his era, yeah. Ugh. This is the era that made me like him. The rest I can't vouch for, but this era. <laughs> <laughs> really, Clark Nato? Really? Oh, but <laughs> I think it's time that uh there we go. There we go. Now they take the spotlight. All right, I'm gonna go grab a beer, you guys. Feel this omnibus out, damn it. Okay, so, so where what? Are we at? What do we leave off? What issues? What is our list? Now I can't even find my books anymore. <laughs> We're all just in complete disarray at this point. 
I'm so, trying to create a new page count for this monster. Legacy-wise, making sense with this, I roughly have 208 to 216, but I don't know if there needs to be more. 208 to 216. And I have them spliced kind of around other books, but that's, from what I'm looking at, my lowest number and my highest number, that's kind of a mess through here. That's what I'm seeing. But I might have a lower one. I'm not sure. And what, what issues of Legacy is the crossover with Wolverine Origins? That I am not sure. Uh, it is. Uh, it's collected in Sins of the Father with 213 through 216, and it crosses over to. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 217 and 218, and it crosses over to Wolverine Origins 28 through 30. So, do would we cap off with that as well? Cause I think it actually makes a brilliant amount of sense if we can make it work. I'm trying yeah. to get the page numbers all lined up. Now, okay. there's two one-shots, and I'm not sure if that is what the Origins is or if they are true one-shots. There's the Unlikely saga, saga of Xavier and then Odd Men Out that both deal with Xavier as well. Odd Men Out is kind of just like random fluff. Yeah. Um, it was like a one-shot of like, what if there was this other guy? But the, um, the Unlikely Saga of Xavier, I think, does have some some worthwhile stuff in it. Yeah, that's, that's the one I had started to go in. I kind of had... So in the collected one I have, I had uh, Magneto and Stan and Odd Men Out kind of marked as like, you really don't need it unless you want fluff. But I, I think that Unlikely Saga, if we're focusing so hard on that dynamic, would be a good addition. Peter, are you still fighting for Blinded by the Light? No, nobody said that. Don't put those no, words in my mouth. No, I'm just asking. <laughs> Blim was so asking that, in the chat. I'm just that would, uh... that was gone for a minute. So, so let me could, just recap the, really... what, I'm refer, what I'm referring to as the Odefell plan, which is which is the plan oh, that, that makes the most. It's, it's the o Odefell's X Men right now. Okay, oh, that's how wow. it's going. Okay, I've been for three minutes and it's Odefell's. You put her in the okay. spotlight. She's, she's, she's in charge. <laughs> she's in charge. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the thing. This is what I think we've agreed to at this point. Okay. X Men endangered species as a whole, which is a number of backup stories. Crossing mm -hmm. across multiple titles. Messiah Complex, which is a crossover across multiple titles. The material of Uncanny X-Men Divided We Stand, which takes us right up to 499, as well as two anthology one-shot stories that are called X-Men Divided We Stand 1 and 2. Then we put all of the X-Men Legacy Professor x -E material in up until his original Sin crossover with Wolverine Origins, which also happens to heavily feature Cyclops and Emma and also fits right in with this range of stuff. It is, is called X-Men Messiah Complex, and it has a total of 1,134 pages. What were those legacy yes. issues called? The legacy issues are from, and Odefell, please correct me if I've got you wrong here. I believe it is 208 through 218. That's that the, issue, uh, legacy, guys! Two 16 is maybe yeah 216 is the the conclusion of the xavier thing i don't know what happens after that um because that's where my collected editions ended but 218 might be something i don't know so I, I don't have the crossover yeah okay then yeah we're cutting it at 216 peter no daniel way in this omnibus uh, so this is what okay, I Okay, but to then you're going to have to put that in another omnibus. That's in the Daniel <laughs> Way. It's the end of the Xavier thing. That's in the Daniel Way omnibus. That's, it, that was Peter's fine. entire argument about separating all the rogue from the Xavier. Fine, we're adding it back in there. God bless America. Do, right, where, but where do we have... 215 is super rogue heavy. I don't know about any other ones. What's the Wolverine origin issues for that? Crossover? Wolverine <laughs> origins, 28 through 30. And the X-Men original not, sin one shot. I cannot believe you're making me add Daniel Way to my stupid omnibus. Right, Omar, you were trying to make, pain. You were trying Wait. to make me ruin X Force omnibus. Oh, we're still ruining it. If I'm ruining my damn omnibus of Messiah Complex with adding Daniel Way in there, then we're ruining K uh, X Force with Cable. All right, so here's what we have. <laughs> here. Uncanny X Men 492 and 499, Endangered Species, X Men 205 to 207, before it becomes X Men Legacy, and then X Men Legacy 208 to 218, New X Men 44 to 46, X Factor 25 to 27, The Mutant Files, X, uh, X Men Divided We Stand 1 and 2, and Wolverine, God bless America, 28 through 30. That's Wolverine Origins for those people that don't know, and Original Sin One Shot. How many pages? 
there's a couple odds and ends we can argue over, but we're in the 1100 zone. This right is now. basically a Mike Carey ob- Damn it! Don't you start with me because I said there was a cable story to be told, and these guys said no. Guess what? If you wanted to put cable one through five into here, we have plenty no. of room, and you could. It's, not, it's done. It's. Wait. I know. We said when we're all done, we'll we'll intercede. Riley, would you buy this book? Yeah, I'd buy hey, that book. Would it say, you know why? Because it has an X Man title on it. That's why. Uh, Michael, would you buy this book? I would buy it because it, it's it's. It focuses on the characters I care about, so yes. Peter, would you buy this book? Yes, because Odefell, it was Odefell all along. Oh, She's because totally that's right. She, Matt, <laughs> you buy? You were like, I'm not buying Omar's X-Men Messiah Complex. I on need like here. a bunny now. <laughs> Sugar Man, thank you for the super chat. Just tell David to reprint all the old He said, we'll bind them together. However, we want to problem solve. P.S. Number six, Punisher by Rucka. Um, I love you, man. Yes. Punisher by Rucka. Let's get it. Yes. Yes, we're going to get that one day. All right. What page dump count are we at with this? About 1,100. The 1,134 number has a couple odds and ends from the collected editions that I don't think mm -hmm. we've got in here, like the Messiah Complex Mutant Files one shot. So mm -hmm. if, if we were to put all of that stuff in, we'd be at 1,134. We're around 1,100. All right. You know what? Guys, I'm calling it. This Print is it. Anonymous. We did it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. After... <laughs> All right, what's on the cover? Oh, good lord! I, you know what? I, I, I will take one of the Messiah. Just... Comp yeah, I will take the Silvestri. Uh, dot, what was it? The Top Cow cover. That's what I'll have. I'll have that. I, uh, I don't want any Daniel. Yeah, Wade I like the Top Cow cover, cover better than the Floating Heads cover. Is that the one where they're all standing? Because I had the the one shot cover A, and I don't know if that's what that it's is. It's the one that I use for the thumbnail. Yes, that's that oh, that's, the, top that's the David Finch cover. Yeah, that's, yeah, that that's one was a good one. Choice. It's a good one. I like that. And then That'd my other nice. was the Sylvester Uncanny 492, which I feel like if we're now focusing on Xavier and like the downfall of things would work really well. Although I really like the David Finch X Men Legacy splash of like yeah. Dark Phoenix, Professor X's floating head. Oh, like the four. The yeah. really broad one. Yeah. Um, actually, you sold me on that. How the hell did we make this book? Okay. That's I think it. there's a, I mean, there's a couple, there's a lot of good covers. There's, uh, I mean, there's the cover of X Men 207, which is just like everybody all piled on top of each other. Wolverine's got his claws out, cables there. Ooh. I think there's the, the cover of Uncanny X Men 494, which is Cyclops and Emma. Emma with that costume with the, um, with the bra that then comes yeah. down into the cave, Wolverine and Beast. Yeah. I mean, so there's that, it's a it's a ooh, smorgasbord wait, of really, covers to choose from. I really like the Sylvester cover on the right. Of, yeah, uh, that's that was my second top pick because I think it just works so well. That's so epic. Look at Cyclops carrying that ridiculous flag. Where is he even? Look at that. <laughs> I want I want an art print of it so bad. Like it looks so cool. It does look cool. I'm with you. Okay. Uh, Cyclops is better than Wolverine. I was saying, the less Wolverine in X-Men's story, the better. Are you serious with a name like that? What is wrong with you, man? Obviously, Oddfell agrees with you. <laughs> I agree. She, she told... I thought Peter would throw a wrench. It was Oddfell that threw the wrench and threw a bunch of X-Men legacy into my wonderful omnibus that I, I had. I love legacy. Here. God, it I old fell all along. Dun, 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 all right. Dun, dun, dun. Down with one book. This is our mapping for the book right here. Book two. <laughs> We're an hour and a half into this. Okay. Book. All right. This is going to be easier. It, it's are, all, are we it's all downhill jumping ahead or are, are we getting – where do we start with book two? Do we start directly off of that and end with second coming or, or what do we do? Are we, are, yeah, are we are we just deciding that we're not really sticking with it being Messiah stuff now? Or are we just kind of filling oh, out no. this era? No. Or like, what no, are we? No, 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 no. We need a back. We need a backtrack. This is a Messiah. This is a Messiah thing. Because I'm like, <laughs> I have stuff I cut out because it wasn't like super important that I would totally put in, but it would really like go around Messiah for like probably enough to fill almost an office. I, I love the division in the chat. Wolverine's <laughs> my clubs. You guys are. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we need, yeah, I think this is a Messiah trilogy still, despite of what, um, no, Peter, Peter agrees with me. He just doesn't consider Messiah comp or I'm sorry, Messiah Wars part of the Messiah trilogy. I consider the Necrotia part 
part of the uh, Messiah trilogy. Uh, but now that is included in this X4 slash Cable Omnibus Volumes 1 and 2, which I'm okay with. Peter, are you okay with Necrocious thing over there? Include Because if, if we split it up between X-Force, Cable, Necrocious, uh, Necrocious can actually include those issues of New Mutants and X-Men Legacy. Would oh, you be okay true, with that? True. And also, I believe we said that Cable doesn't even exist until we've got everything mapped. Yeah, I'm but, not, yeah, I'm not the even final thinking thing about I'll say Cable. Is, you know, I, X-Force has these multiple crossovers intersecting with it, but Second Coming kind of resolves the whole period. It has resolutions for everybody. It has resolutions for Cable, for X-Force, for X-Men, for Rogue, but Necrotia really resolves a lot of the X-Force stuff, the Purifier stuff, the Selene stuff. So, like, exactly. you, you, it's the big climax. It's the blowout. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you need... Like, to, if you were to say we're doing an X-Force, I'm going to cut it off before Necrotia, we'll fit that somewhere else. I'd be, like, ringing the alarm. Like, no, that's crazy. There's no satisfaction in that book. Okay. Let's well, map book two. Let's so, say in a perfect world that this X-Force and Cable omnibus exists with Necrotia in it. What's left to collect to take us to the, the road to Second Coming? So the other titles would be Uncanny legacy and then again i said earlier but i don't think we really need to pay attention to x factor because they're doing their own thing yeah, x factor is his own thing it would be its own pad on this line like there's no reason to get torn and out. then what other uh, there's wolverine <laughs> at the time but i don't think we need to focus Scott, with wolverine either. Scott, we spent an hour and a half deciding on the book we can't agree on a direct market cover yet pick one pick one it's your choice it's uh print it's on all you here. scott it's all you, Scott. No, you you just tell us what the cover it's going to be, and we'll say yes. I, I kind of like that, Peter, because we just argued for an hour and a half over this <laughs> damn book. I think our I think the upshot was we love all of the covers from that that They're all so that good. Finch well, the best period. Great. Like throw a dart. Finch, Finch was <laughs> really solid. honestly. Um, I it, see, I had it starting with Messiah War, but now I'm like, wow, if we have extra you guys, space, you we guys can make more nation extra utopia. And now I'm like, oh, it doesn't have to be cut out, but also like how much? <laughs> it's okay. People like double dipping. So, yeah, so I mean, no, <laughs> people like double dipping. Shut up, Peter. You know you do. <laughs> I mean, okay, well, I'm like now I'm like if we're if we're on. getting rid of if we're getting rid of Necrotia and and X Force out of it, like there's a lot more space, so we probably could have oh, put part of Utopia in. But come it, come is that? Lollet? Direct market covers with Necrotia, though, like with Celine and all those like movie covers that they did. That would have been so fun, but that's okay. It's whatever. These guys killed my idea. What what issues of game. what issues of the two titles did we end in on the previous one? It was two eighteen of Legacy, and then what issue four ninety nine. Right. Uh, so we ended with four ninety nine, and we ended with uh, X Men Legacy two hundred eighteen, because okay. that's part of the original sin. And Peter said that was necessary uh, to get Daniel Way's name in this omnibus. And we need <laughs> so Daniel do we <laughs> read Origins in there? All right. Yeah, yeah. Do we put everything Uncanny and everything Legacy that leads from that point all the way to Second Coming? Because there's a lot. And at that point, are we, if we do that, do we also, because that's that's a point where there's a lot of, because that's where you have um, the, the different, like, kind of mini events within uh, Uncanny X-Men. You have Manifest Destiny, you have Utopia, you have Nation X. So there's a lot of additional material in there where you could have, I mentioned before, this interim volume that collects all of that material together and then you have something that goes into second coming with all of the immediate stuff before it. Yeah, you have the Dark X-Men material. And well, that would be a mad fraction omnibus, but you guys put a damn wrench into my plan by throwing all this stuff in there. That's why this is such a really this, hard era to it map. It is a hard era there's to map. There's so much happening. There, there's yeah, a lot. I, because I feel like X Men and Uncanny are its own thing. X Men Legacy was right. They didn't rely on anything that Matt Fraction. Matt Fraction was like, "Hey, we're moving to Alcatraz. We're the Nation X now." Whereas X Men Legacy is like, 
Rogue is like, hey, I miss my friend Rachel. She's up in space somewhere because Ed Brubaker forgot about her. Let's go get her back. <laughs> well, I mean, that's Dude, after that Second Coming. After Before Second, Second Coming, coming right? it's because Rogue's featured very heavily in the Nation Absolutely, X, in the fight with Capital X. And then at that same time, there's the Emplet trade in Legacy, where like Emplet is like haunting them on his weird own dimension, and she fights him, and she's now she has control over her powers, and she absorbs Emplet brief, briefly. Like the the this period, I think you look. There's a couple different arguments to make, right? So one argument is we just keep it by title line. That's the easy argument. We haven't taken that one so far. The next argument is that you kind of you it's kind of like the Odefell plan where you like anchor with one of the crossovers that ought to start or finish a, a book and you kind of just map to towards or away from that point right so you say this book should end with a utopia or the next book should start with utopia and you kind of just map in that direction or then there's the third kind of like full-on in intermingle it all um and kind of just like put everything that goes where it goes and if the crossovers fit you know in the middle of that great so I think we kind of just, you know, much like our first discussion, we got to decide. Personally, I think you don't need the legacy stuff to understand this. And honestly, you could get from where we, where Odefell cut us off on legacy, all the way to the end of legacy, all including the Chris Gage stuff at the end, all in one book at this point. So I am really not including all of Age of X. So I'm not even concerned about legacy. That that now has entered the, the cable file. We're all. Rem remember about it later. Okay. The one that I think, <laughs> Riley, is more of a problem here is New Mutants because there's which only I had forgotten about. Yeah, there's only like 10 issues of New Mutants before we get to Second Coming. And even right. though I, I frigging love the Zeb Wells New Mutants omnibus, it's like you're, you're either going to carve that up piecemeal here or what? You're going to try to sell a New Mutants by Wells and Abnet and Lanning omnibus later? That doesn't feel like a seller to me. So it's kind of like these are these are the questions we're dealing with now. Oh, you mean like Cable, Peter? That I don't know that name. I don't know her. Well, you mean like Cable? <laughs> Who is she? But yeah, it's it's so hard because New Mutants gets chunked up by Necrotia and it gets chunked up by no, Second no. Coming and yeah. it just gets like messy. Yeah. No, and it has the Legion true. stuff and it has magic coming back and then magic is a factor in Second Coming and then you're like, where did she come from if you didn't read New Mutants? But I, magic I love the Zeb Wills run. Okay, I will say that I don't think any of that stuff should be in the second omnibus. I think that should be its own thing because it can now carry. We're getting a, for God's sakes, we're getting a new Mutants Omnibus Volume 2. I think the name itself will be able to carry New Mutants by Zeb Wells or DNA later on. I would love that. I, I, I'm serious. I'm, I would, I, and I am serious too. I, I, I think we need to focus, bring the focus back to this trilogy, but how do you lead into Second Coming? Because I think the, 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 the big key key factor is that X-Force and Cable book that we just kind of put together last minute. Thank you, Riley. Um, I'm leaning towards I'm leaning towards Riley, and there almost needs to be an intermediary one that's like Manifest Destiny through Utopia okay. Nation X, setting that up because having some of them, not all of them, is weird, but you can't fit all of them and war. And then the second one could be like war and second coming. I don't know, like, but I don't know how you would sell that then because there would be kind of like this weird middle thing that I don't does know. It have, does it have an X Men part? Does it have an X Men on the title? <laughs> you, you could literally just, yeah, yeah you could title it Nation X and it would sell. It was, you call it X Men Nation X, it will sell, especially if you call it Messiah Trilogy. Part two. Yeah, you could do like Messiah trilogy building a nation. All right. So <laughs> this this is this this is where I think you guys threw the big wrench in because now I'm um man because we have the aftermath happening towards the end of the first omnibus. How do you continue into the how do you make set okay? The key is how do you make second coming into the next omnibus? Because if Messiah War and the Crocia X are part, or X of Crocia rather, are part of the X Horse and Cable Omnibus One and Two, what do we have to 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 pad out Second Coming? We don't have issues of X uh, of Cable anymore. There, because there's quite a gap. There's a, there's quite a gap in between Messiah Complex and Second Coming. Yeah, more than an omnibus is worth of Uncanny X Men. Okay, so let's leave Uncanny X-Men out because I really think there will be a mad fraction on Uncanny X-Men. So let's go back to the... Uh, okay, first of all, let's go back to this. We ended this with Divided We Stand, X-Men Legacy. 
So what about the Nation X miniseries? What about starting with something like that? It's a mess, but at least it's collected somewhere. Yeah, but the Nation X miniseries is just a bunch of one-shot it's, stories. Yeah, it's not it's, like it's, it's not, not set up but, second but coming. That, but, that, but that's okay. It needs to be collected somewhere. And I think if it's going to fit anywhere, it would be collected in the second coming omnibus. Uh, it's just Matt Fraction has the same problem that Brubaker has, where his run was caught up in too many little events. It, it literally, he starts with Manifest Destiny, and then he goes into the Dark X-Men crossover, Dark Avengers crossover, and then it goes into Utopia, and then all of a sudden we get into uh, the Second Coming. It's like one after another. So there's there's so many things where it's like, well, there's the Nation X miniseries, there's the Messiah, uh, or Manifest Destiny stuff, there's the Dark X-Men stuff, Dark mm -hmm. X-Men to the beginning. There's so many extra things in there that I feel like even though Fraction is a name that sells, it almost feels like you could ignore Fraction as a name that sells. Is he a name utilize. that sells? I don't, I don't know if he's a name that sells, honestly. I think more people would buy something if it's got X-Men on it. So maybe, let's ignore maybe, the maybe name. Maybe me being biased because I'm not the biggest fan of Matt Fraction. I get it. I understand why people love it. But I, I, I think X-Men would sell on its own despite of who's writing it. Unless it's like, I mean, look at look at New X-Men. It didn't sell on Grant Morrison. It sold on New X-Men, right? Didn't sell on the, on the name Grant Morrison or Joss Whedon's Astonishing X-Men. I think right, it it's was, enough to just have the author in the title. Like you don't, it's not, yeah, if you're not Claremont, you don't have to say by Claremont. Even the old X-Men omnibuses don't say by Claremont. They're just uncanny X-Men volume four. Yeah. Man, this, this, this one is tough for me. I don't know. I, 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 I need something to start with. And I don't know where to start now because my original idea has just gone that way. Well, look, if you're talking about trying to make Second Coming rewarding as the end to something, I think there's an argument that you just start at Utopia and you end at Second Coming. So it's basically just like Utopia, Nation X, some hangers on Nation X stuff, and Second Coming, because it gives you the X-Men context you need, it explains why they're on the island, you buy the X-Force omnibus or you don't, and then Second Coming resolves them with their backup of what against the wall in the island. This, however, is somewhat ahistorical to the way that Marvel has thought about this run, because in the Matt Fraction complete collections, they just keep collecting right past Second Coming for two more arcs. Now, at that point, Matt Fraction was co-plotting and then co-writing with Gillen in The Birth of Generation Hope and Quarantine. But Marvel, to this point, has grouped them in with Fraction stuff and treated 534.1 as if it's the beginning of Gillen. But you could make the argument that actually anything that's like five lightsy should should be forward. Because then you have to start thinking about Generation Hope and X-Club and all these other things mm -hmm. that happen afterwards. So mm -hmm. I think if you're making the argument that Second Coming is the end of something, you probably start somewhere around Utopia. If you want to make the argument that Second Coming is the beginning, beginning of something, also a fine argument, then, then we have to map it a different way. So would you take any of the one shots and the minis that came after Second Coming that are collected in Revelations at all? Or would you just consider that the next era? I Well, you know, I would leave out the X Factor stuff because it's just there to fill out the book. And I think I would put in Blind Science, Hellbound, and Hope. Um, Blind Science is literally happening during Second Coming. Yeah. It's like off to the side. Uh, Hellbound is the mission that Cannibal and the team goes to hell during Second Coming. So like, they, I don't, I never understood even back in 2011 why they put them out in two separate books. So yeah, yeah I, I would absolutely include them, but not the X Factor material. Yeah, because the, the two one shots and then Hellbound, I was like, I feel like you need those. I don't know if I'd put them after Second Coming. I might try and splice them in with yeah. the lineup. Yeah, I think it'd be like... cool to put them in with. <laughs> I can't ban Cyclops <laughs> is better than Wolverine. That's the man's opinion. By I mean, the way, it's just the objective truth. And he's a really good guy. Just you know, just because Peter and I don't agree on things doesn't mean I can't ban him. I mean, I can, but I'm not going to. It's a democracy. <laughs> I will ban freaking uh, Riley though for uh, trying to like completely cut out my cable on the bits that I had planned, but that's okay. It's, it's His, like quarter of the screen, just like <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> but he takes up this other part of the screen, so it's all good. All right, so Nation X is that where we're starting on the way to on the road to Second Coming? Odfa, would you start Are with we... Utopia or no? Two Avengers E. I could see starting with Utopia. I could see some of the Manifest Destiny we left out, but I think. 
it's hard because to me, Utopia and Nation X are very like AVX books, but I think that like if we're cutting a lot of the X Force and the Cable and then Acrosia out, then absolutely there's space for it, and it's stuff that I like to read, so I'm down to put it in. Um, I just, especially because Second Coming has so much to do with Utopia, I could see it making sense in setting it up in a good way. So I'm for it. I'm okay with that. So if so you starting... just basically took the four oversized hardcovers, Utopia, Nation X, Second Coming, and Second Coming Revelations minus the X-Factor issues, you would have a 1,262-page omnibus. Cut out the X-Factor issues. What does that give us? 1,262 pages. Is that what you just said? Yeah. This is what happens when I drink beer. Okay. <laughs> um... I mean, it's, it, you know, it's kind of like stupid obvious. Those of us who have the hardcovers are like, yeah, but I mean, it's yeah. stupid obvious for, for a reason. It's real readable. What is, uh, did, what is did the we Nation want X omnibus or the hardcover collect? Nation X? Yeah, what does the uh, OHC collect? 515 to 522, Dark Reign, The List, X-Men, and Nation X 1 through 4. And that sits right up next to Second Coming. And then Utopia, we said using Utopia, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so then that has the Dark Avengers, Uncanny X-Men, uh, Utopia and Exodus, that's two issues, the bookends. Uncanny X-Men 513 to 514, and Dark Avengers 7 through 8, Dark X-Men the beginning 1 through 3. This also has X-Men Legacy 226 to 227, and then uh, Dark X-Men the Confession and material from Dark Reign the Cabal. Now you could leave out the legacy issues, they very much mm -hmm. are just their own thing. Like Rogue arrives and fights Ares. It's like, it's not a yeah. direct crossover, it's off to the side. I, you know, it's we're talking about I added it's like 49 pages, so it yeah. doesn't really matter if we include it or not. Then I think some people on the chat would probably point out the Dark X Men, the actual, I think it's five Paul issue. Corn, yeah, mini Paul Cornell series does fit in here too, so you could make the argument for that. I think you could also make the argument for the Psylocke limited series, I want to say, fits in here. I'm looking uh, in my, is which is really good, and it's been out of print for a long time. That would be a good one. Uh, like, uh, who's the artist on that? Tol, tol, Tolbino, Tol, Tol, Tolabau. Sure, is that how you say it? I think I, I don't. I think that's who it is. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out where it fits. Yeah, and that actually is one of the first things that happens after Utopia. It kind of goes Utopia, um, Dark X Men, Psylocke, and then mm -hmm. the uh, Nation X stuff. Psylocke, huh? It's by it's Thank who's you, it by Strong. Yost? Who wrote Who wrote it? Anybody? I think it was Yost. Yeah, it was Yost. It was Yost. With, yes, I with like Harvey, Harvey Tolibau on art. Yeah, Yost. Yeah, it was Yost, and it had uh, David Finch on covers, and cannot remember. What happened to that guy? That guy was an amazing artist. Yeah, uh, that book is it's a good book. It looks good. But was there anything? Because now that, we're, we're thinking that. about... Tolibau. That was now we're thinking about other miniseries and stuff. Was there anything else before between this time that could also show up in here? Because then at this point, if we're putting more minis in there, we're going to have to start thinking about if there's anything to trim. Mm -hmm. The only other mini that fits into this period is really Pixie Strikes Back, which I think you could make the argument should be in some kind of like young X-Men or New Mutants or something book. But because it, it's kind of silly, it doesn't really fit the tone. Um, otherwise it's just like, and then sword, which Marvel has set the precedent of collecting along with Gillen stuff as sort of a prelude to Gillen since he's going to use brand. So I, mm -hmm. I don't think you necessarily need sword in with nation okay. X. That, that's that's okay. it really. If we're starting utopia anyway, that's really yeah. it. So what, what would that, how, what would our page count? We're, we're fat right now, but like, what would the page count be if we added both of those mini series and did not take anything out? Dark X-Men and Psylocke. Right. Uh, hold one moment, please. Hmm. I'm not fighting hard for them. I just want to be clear here. I'm just saying, if we're okay, if we're playing, yeah. It was uh, David C. It was a it was a uh, four issue miniseries. It really, I mean, it, it could be left out, but I like the inclusion of it because we could be as high as fifteen hundred pages. Got gorgeous like artwork. Yeah, David Gabriel's heavy work is being done in this in a great way. You're welcome, David. <laughs> yeah, we could tell him about all the argument we had. We haven't even chosen the I mean, think about it. There's people paid. There's people paid to be, whether they're paid as salaried employees or they're getting, you know, like a rate to put this book together that are in a room pretty much doing this. They're all on Zoom and they've got their comic collection around them and they're just doing this. 
There's nothing special about them doing it versus us doing it. We all have access to all the same issues and page counts as each other. True, true. So would there be anything... Should we should we include both of those? Try I to include both of those? At least it's, Dark X-Men, if we're doing all the rest. Psylocke, uh -huh. it would be cool to see collected, but I'd say if we had to cut one, it has less to do than Dark X-Men. But okay. I'd like to see both. Man, you guys are making me add that fraction Dark Avengers X-Men. Uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of that era, but whatever. Oh, man, Plim is right. Include Psylocke Mini, but not blinded by the light? How dare we? How dare we? I'm not saying it's essential. I'm just saying, like, if we're trying to be those people that include everything, there's actually very little other stuff in, in this particular little, and that's one of the few things there there is. You know, so we can... Actually, the other one is Storm Worlds Apart, but I think that happened earlier than this. I would not say... Pixie in this omnibus, though. That, that's, that's yeah, Worlds Apart happens way, way earlier in Manifest Destiny. What's up, okay. Carl? All right. I, I like the addition of all these little mini series that normally would not be added anywhere else. So I'm okay with that. So what do we have on this, Peter? Okay, so right now we have the contents of the Utopia hardcover, the contents of the Nation X hardcover, the contents of the Second Coming hardcover, the contents of the Second Coming Revelations hardcover, minus the X Factor issues, as well as provisionally. Dark X-Men 1 through 5, and Psylocke 1 through 4. That should total somewhere in the area, because there's some estimating happening here, of around 1,500 pages. 1,500 pages? This is in DC, guys. What the I'm sorry, heck? did you see that War of the Realms omnibus on your channel, uh, Omar? Did you have the, that one back there? It was the only one. 1,500 pages for Utopia Nation. Well, then kick out Psylocke and Dark X-Men. No, no, I, I want to keep them. Psylocke's got that butt shot in the first issue. <laughs> Gosh, man. Okay. So I we can't. can take those two legacy issues out. That saves us like 40 yeah, saves pages. Us 50 pages. No, you know what? <laughs> we might as well kill some more trees. Let's go ahead and make it 1,500 pages. Utopia, Nation X, and say, you see, mine was a lot simpler. Mine was a trilogy, but you guys threw a wrench into that plan. But I kind of like it. I like. But we can it. still have because there's that material. There's the fraction material that's not going to be in this one. That's in between the two books. You'll get it. That's. He'll get his own. And, yeah, and then you just call that Uncanny X Men by Fraction or Uncanny exactly. X Men Manifest Destiny. And you call this one either Uncanny X Men, right. you call it like Un Dude, X Men right. Utopia to Ruin or Second Coming or, you know, whatever. Odefo, would you buy this book the way it's currently trending? Probably, because I think that it's it's a really good prelude for anyone who is trying to figure out what happens between House of M and ABX. I think like. The Messiah stuff is important, but it's kind of all involved in itself. But as like a general X-Men in this era, I think this one has a lot of the like, wow, okay, this hits. So I think this one's pretty strong. Could I, I'm going to make a possible suggestion. Oh no, don't you dare. What? What now? The So what if this and no. all, all of this was moved to that intermediary book with the rest of the Fraction stuff? I would be okay with moving that because honestly, yeah. that's a fraction book. I can so, see so that means because then I mean, think about it. We have all of this. We could also put the the Dark X Men miniseries by by Paul Cornell along with that. And we put that with uh, the Sisterhood uh, trade paperback. There was one other fraction paperback that hasn't been hard covered, and then there's the the stuff from there's two Manifest Destiny hardcovers actually. Yeah, it's confusing. then you can you can throw all of the the uncanny X Men manifest destiny X Men manifest destiny Wolverine manifest destiny and all the one shots and stuff in there, and that'd be a pretty yeah. decent sized book as well, and that's going to be a good bridge between the the main two books that we're talking about. That but where does it end? Where do you cut off and start this book? I would I would start that book. It would basically be just five hundred through uh, five fourteen. Because 515 takes us with Nation X. And that way, the second coming book is Nation X and second coming, the material from Revelations, the relevant material. And then um, we can have 
the uh, Psylocke, and you could even put Pixie in there. And if there's anything else that you want, there's going to be a little more room in there because you're pulling out probably, what, 400 plus pages worth of material? Yeah. I, I'm not counting. If, if it's that crossover, then yes. All right, DM cover right there, Psylocke. Just I mean, at least it's not full on broke back, right? Like, Odefell, is that a pose that one can actually make with their body, would you say? I feel like it's definitely not flattering from the front. That's what I can say. <laughs> 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 Guys, that's a pose anybody can make. She's only two swords. Show us, Omar. Not, not, a, not long. <laughs> well, I'm gonna arch the back the light, a little. The like I've been there, it does. It looks good from one angle, but you can do it. The right in this room. Just, you know, it looks great from the back, but you know, yeah, I'm sure it's a mess from the front. She's not holding those swords properly. So make that the DM. You've got me. Yeah, Riley, I'm not against that plan at all because it's kind of like just that. like it's like a slider in the middle that you can just slide. Yeah. Before Utopia or after Utopia, it just doesn't make a difference. It, it really comes down to if you think the book is more exciting to end with Utopia or to begin with Utopia. It just really, it really but, doesn't matter. Are we me. not making it? No, we're ending it with Second Coming, guys, right? Yeah, yeah, no, everything, that third book is going to end with Second Coming. And then that means that potentially we could have the latter fraction, Five Lights, go in with all of Gillen's stuff. Yeah. And that could be um, a later book. I'm down. I kind of like a middle book because you okay. can like theme it like building a nation. Yeah, because it's not just the fraction stuff; it's everything else what? from in, what you're doing. In that way, then you can just have an X Men fraction book, being that building a nation, and you don't need a X Men omnibus by Matt Fraction. I like that. Yeah. I'm down with yeah, that. And I think putting Utopia into that that this thing we keep calling the middle book gives it a little bit more like. Like right right now, without Utopia, it kind of doesn't really have like a like a big hook. Like, oh, that one story, you know. Like, I like Sisterhood and Memphis yeah. Destiny, but Utopia is like the oh shit of that book. So I I think it does give it a little bit more sales power if you move it there. And everything wraps up with Second Coming, right? Yeah. Where yeah, you you get whatnot. you get you could throw a cover that has like the the Dark Avengers or Dark X Men as one of the, the covers. And that's going to draw people in because I, people loved the Dark Reign era. That was a really interesting era. Moonstone. I think I'm going to draw people in with Psylocke as my direct market cover. And then the second coming <laughs> will be my standard edition cover. Just saying. Are we done? Is that it? We did it? I think we did it, y'all. We did it. Now where all the cable issues go. Uh, in that nowhere X Force Omnibus that, uh, <laughs> one and two that Riley uh, made. Everyone's well, now now we have. I hey, th this is the point where we we discuss. I'm going to be right back, but then you can see what the page counts would be for everything, and see if there's anywhere that you can just throw cable in with the rest of these things. Because now it's not going to be like 12 issues of cable at the end of one book. It would be like six issues here, six issues here. I don't know. It, it, no, it no, worked I mean, out a lot better. And there are points in Uncanny X Men where like Cyclops like has a vision or something, or like Cable manages to send them a message. I I think it's a little too much to map right now. But I agree. I think we made all of the books small enough now that we really could just distribute Cable across all four of these books, one arc arc. Okay. Yeah, I'll be back. Yeah. The X Force and Cable book. That's good enough. There we go. And Shit. honestly, I get the thing I wanted earlier, which is putting that last Cable arc into the Second Coming book, where it makes sense. So it's perfect. All right. So is everybody on agreement? Are these our books? Well, Riley yeah. can't go, but you know, you guys can. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's not the books I came here to buy, but it's a book. It's books that I'm willing to leave here buying, which is. Yeah. Would, you, would you be willing to buy them? Yes, yes, I would buy every one of these on the day they were solicited. Okay. And these are more appealing than the ones I made. So. <laughs> yeah, these are better than what I came with. This is. This is completely different than the idea I had, but I like it. I'm okay but Would you it. buy them? Because this is not what you came ready does to buy. That, but... does, does it have X-Men on the title, Peter? Of course I want to buy these. But would you, like, enthusiastically buy them, or would you, like, oh, I've got to add this to the X-Men shelf? Dude, I would them. enthusiastically buy a Chuck Austin X-Men on the business. Me yes. too. Yes. Right? When are we going to do our live dr live dramatic reading of the Draco? We could all take a part, and we could do it in the round. So bad, dude. <laughs> So bad. It's such a bad story. I don't, and I think I, is it is it that most people hate uh, she lies with angels more than the the Draco because I I hate that story so much. I hate that story. Like it's so bad. 
Well, I think the, She Lies yeah. with Angels has like a the all time worst cringe moment of of maybe yeah. all X Men ever. Yeah. But Draco is like a worse continuity story, so it's kind of like what upsets you more, cringe or continuity? You, you got both. <laughs> yeah, this is bad. Is it X Men? Yes, I'll buy it. Of course, one hundred percent. Oh, fell. Would you buy this? Yeah, so I, I like, I, I really like Dark Avengers and Utopia stuff. So I, I would probably buy this more so than the ones I came here to build where a lot of this was kind of cut. So I, especially the middle one, like absolutely. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think this is so much better than any fan mapping I've seen before. I think the fan mappings I've seen get super obsessed with the lines that are already in the collected editions and the lines that are already in the books. And I think that, not that we went so far off the beaten path, but this just is better. Okay. Hmm. I like and there's that. plenty of room around it, right? We could have that rogue omnibus at some point. We could then have one or two volumes of the whole like Fraction Gillen hope stuff and fit in all of Generation Hope into that without making it just uncanny. I mean, it opens up more possibilities because of how it's mapped. Uh, no, I like it. Yeah. This was, this was a great discussion. We've mapped out two books. And two four books. magical books. Right? <laughs> and that's a okay. hypothetical four. A solid two. You know what? We didn't even, like, this is what the Marvel people do for a living. And there's discussions amongst days and then covers. We didn't even argue that bad. We're still friends at the end of the day. And that's all that matters. So where did, where did we land? What, what happened while I was gone? Well, we're making X-Force and Cable happen. Volumes one and two. Of course, because when I leave, we need we need to throw in some trash with some great stuff, and that's what happens. So each of these books will have a bonus section of Chuck Austin flashback material. Yes, oh. yes. <laughs> yes. Peter understands the pain of Chuck Austin. Peter, <gasps> honestly, I've always been curious because you and I differ uh, when it comes to X Men. What was the worst X Men era for you? What was the roughest to read? Because for me, twenty thirteen was... to twenty nineteen. Okay, so for me, well, that that. God bless. That's that's a that's six years. It's been a long mean, decade. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, it was Chuck Austin and Peter Milligan. I think those those were rough. Milligan is rough. Milligan is rough. There's a couple. But, I like Rogue, so that gets me through. But it's dude, rough. It's rough. Worst bit of apocalypse. But seriously, what was the worst there? Like it, Bendis was rough, but I don't like to talk about that one so much because a lot of people really like it. Like really, a lot of people really like that era, and we wouldn't have magic. If it wasn't for Bendis, the way yeah, magic, yeah. magic it's developed. Messy. Yeah. It's messy, but it's my first X Men run, so I'm like nostalgic for oh, it, even though I know it's trash. So, yeah. <laughs> but it gets a pass. Your first yeah. X Men run, and it right? got me into magic. So, like, but for me, I it's more like it. it's not that I. It's not that I hate Bendis so so much. It's just like what is happening for the X Men. Other than just the teens, it's kind of just, like that Cyclops Revolution arc goes on for so long, and then it kind of they're like, oh, then it's that whole trial of or last will of Xavier, then it's the oh, Phoenix God. egg, and then it kind of just ends, and then the next era is weird. To, it's just like yeah, really I, lacks a center point, which is the thing that makes me frustrated with X Men. Exactly, Bendis had so many good concepts, and then never executed any of them, and then the Teen X Men showed up, and then I just spiraled into chaos. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. I I think it's a mess, but I would still buy an omnibus. Yeah, Matthew Malloy. All is the stuff post. I, I I'm 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 almost with that statement about Matthew Malloy because that will of Professor Xavier was horrible. Uh, what's who wrote the run with the crows? That was also bad. Was that Joe? Uh, Joe Kelly? Not Joe Kelly. The crows. <laughs> Yeah, Steve St Siegel, Siegel, the birds attacking. Some people are really into Kelly Siegel X Men though. There's like, there's like a, a get, swath. There's like a vein of Kelly Siegel truthers from from the old CBR boards that are still out there. From? Dude, those stories were so bad. Okay, saving grace of all of this was the art though. Yeah, Chris, uh, what's his name? Uh, okay. Bac Bacalo. Yeah. Is that, you? Is that how you say it? Um. And then you had Joe Mad on Uncanny because man, that Seagull run was rough. Yeah, you know, X Men has its ups and downs. S -s -s man, Peter laid it out there. Six years of bad X Men stories, though. Hmm. Not wrong. <laughs> hmm. Six. I think years. there was a lot. Like, however you felt about Bendis's two series, there were other titles during that era though that I really enjoyed. Like, I liked the Legion series 
quite a bit, and I, I tend to forget about it too. Well, Legion was on like its own little pocket universe, though, right? right? And that's that's kind of what happens with a lot of those titles. Whatever. I think yeah, I like Storm all Solo by Pack well. is amazing. All new Wolverine happens in there. I mean, there's a lot of individual yeah. great stuff. Yeah, I just Absolutely. think if we're talking about like mainstream, main center right. of the line X Men, it's kind of like because yeah, I, I've mentioned before that the the era after that is like a lot of that era is where the, it was the main line was bad, but there was still stuff that I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Like uh, like I I enjoyed Colin Bunn's Uncanny X Men aside from when Greg Land was on the art, okay. but I. But I really, you know, was disappointed with Jeff Lemire's Extraordinary X-Men. Yeah. Because I had such high hopes for Jeff Lemire writing the X-Men. I think most of us did. And then he himself didn't know about this editorial mandate. But every time I hear that editorial mandate, I think I, I think of Grant Morrison on JLA. He had to write Superman as Blue hey. Lightning Superman. And if yeah. anybody can get away with it, it is the wonderful talent of Grant Morrison, which shows you what kind of writer you have to be to write these stories. You got to just roll with the punches. Okay. Well, Holy shit. I don't want to use blue lightning Superman. I want to use Superman, Superman, but if that's all I can get. And then on top of that, you had flash wonder woman changing. Like, I think it takes a strong writer to write these kind of stories, but that's a whole nother topic. What's the next map by X? What do you guys want to do? This one, this one wore you guys out. Yeah. Something easier than this. <laughs> You guys want to map like uh, I in don't my know. brain this was simple and on execution it was not <laughs> <laughs> right. I knew this was going to happen the minute so what, you said I do not agree with the title the Messiah trilogy. Like I was like, oh, we're going to be arguing. Yeah, we're what, still. What did we land to... on? What did Go we ahead. land on finally? Like so, so we have the map. We we had the map for the first book is is uh, the Messiah complex, right? Mm-hmm. And then that one, did we add anything to that after? Because I, I left for like three minutes or something. No, nothing was added. Okay. And it's then map right here. Okay. First and did, did we agree about having that book in the middle that would have the other stuff? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You convinced so, us. Okay. And then we ended with a third volume for Second Coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we have X-Force and Cable. We all agreed on that. I moved Utopia into the middle book, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. Utopia got moved. Yes. So it's I'm gonna in 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 my in my realm, Cable and X Force isn't a thing. It's still just X Force, and I'm just gonna say Cable can can stay over in his own paperbacks. And that's Look, man, I gave you that middle book with a bunch of crappy Matt Fraction stories. You better give me my X Force and Cable. Hey, a lot. Man, I'm telling you, the first that. arc of Cable, you throw into that first Messiah Complex book and give people a little bit of satisfaction right. about where Hope book Hope went. The second Cable arc, you throw into this middle fraction book because Cyclops is like, where's Cable? I'm just going well. The third that. Cable arc, you throw into the X Force book to show okay. where he goes after Strife. The fourth Cable arc, you throw into Second Coming because it shows there how you go. Hope gets the present that's cool. what adds and since 128 we already, pages to each fine, one and it distributes it across. when we moved the material from uh from the third book into the middle book that left that that's where that room came that you can put cable in there and i don't I'm, think it disrupts anything yeah i'm not liking that i've had to cave into all your guys things so i will say i am you bummed like the second coming omnibus i really wanted a cable variant cover on it because cable 21 the hope cover is like it's bomb. It's so yeah, good. It's so good. I'm like, that's the one. But if cable's not, and I mean, if myself. if like if what with Peter was just saying, then yeah, that could be in. That could be yeah. in there. Uh, Fraser T, thank you for the super chat. Then this was fun to watch. P.S. Love your CJ tent, Peter. You helped me a ton, especially when I first got into finding comic YouTube content. Peter is the man. I love this guy. Despite of not agreeing with him on everything, because uh, he loves the Bendis run on X Men. I I mean I I love you all because we can. The best sign is when you can get together and disagree vehemently and still have fun and leave I loving the people. That's the best. You don't want friends that agree with you all the time. That's if you're Doctor Doom, you want friends that agree with you all the time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's so boring. Nobody wants to be around people that agree with you all the time. God bless. That's so boring. I like people that disagree with me and then kind of make me change my mind. Exactly. You know, like I want that. my mind to be changed. Yeah, we, which we did. Peter's now yeah. for my X-Force and Cable omnibus that I'm having. 
Yeah. All right. What's the next map, my ex? Everybody, what do you all? What what era do you all want to tackle? We want it to be hard. We can jump back to the nineties, <laughs> like They're, post post onslaught. Okay. Yeah. We what, post onslaught or or post Age of Apocalypse Road to Onslaught. Well, Road to Onslaught is like pretty that. easy, but the stuff between because there's like between Onslaught, onslaught and Operation. And I'll show you right here. Between X Men Avengers Onslaught and X Men Operation Zero Tolerance, there is quite a few. And then after mm -hmm. Operation Zero Tolerance and Apocalypse and Twelve, I mean, we could put all that together, but that's no fun. So basically. These are all the things, aside from Road to Onslaught, that don't have oversized hardcovers. Hold on. Dean is saying, Omar, next time you guys could map the stuff between Jim Lee, Claremont, Volume 2, and the Age of Apocalypse Omnibus. Oh, that's already an oversized hardcover, uh, Dean. Like, that's that's Bishop's Crossing, Executioner's Song, Shattershot, uh, Fatal Attractions, and uh, what else? Cyclops and Phoenix Wedding. Phalanx Covenant and Legion Quest. That stuff's already yeah. been collected in oversized format. It's just making it's it's about making it into an omnibus though. I what I've been seeing a lot in comments on collected communities though, to, to Dean's point, is because Bishop's Crossing is like so out of print, people uh, are like, can't you just put it in with something? Like shove it in with fatal attractions with or omnibus, I, 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 I know, I just think that the opportunity was to gang it up with the Shattershot stuff, and maybe that'll happen like four or five years from now. But I, I feel for people who got into this hobby not this very minute, because that Bishop book is old, and it's hard to get now. And it's got some of my favorite stuff, like Uncanny X-Men 281 in it. Do you have a, I, do you have a library table? cart? What is happening what right now? What are you now? doing, Riley? Quit trying I, to I have the library. I'm putting everything back where it goes. Oh, okay. That is like a dream library, I swear. I know. Map out. I want him to wheel the, la you know, the wheelie ladder. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I always wanted one of those that I can just like slide down and feel like Belle. It's so my I dream, Odfall, to have a house that has one of those. That's mm -hmm. like, that. I'll have made it when I have a house with a <laughs> wheelie ladder. I feel that so much. I've been calling it the, the Beauty and the Beast ladder, so I can just Yes. Like... <laughs> it, it would be I fun I just want to feel books. like Belle in a library, like... Oh, yeah, we all want to feel like Bell in the library. We all want our, what's his name, Garcon? What is it, sweetie? Are you saying goodnight? Where's mommy? Where's mommy? That's a good question. Oh, that's a that's a question I don't want to answer. Where is mom? I don't know. That's not good. Is she missing? I think she went to the store. She went to the store? Are you sure? You've been in your room, like, all day. That would be best. Okay, te quiero. I'm, I'm going to go. Yep, you're going to go. All right. I, I have a, a fun kid story for you and everybody for a second, Omar. So my, sure. my daughter is around the same age as your daughter. And uh, she's like, oh, are you in that show with Mr. Omar gangs? We call everybody Mr. Aww, and Miss to her. So and so she's like, so how is that different than the show that you're normally on? I was explaining that you do all these books, whatever. And I told her the story about how you got to choose the cover for the um, one X-Men omnibus that you like made the bet with David Aubrey. And we've just read that material. And she's like, oh, he got to choose the Aww. cover. So now every time I talk about getting to hang out with you, she's like, Mr. Omar, who chooses the covers. I'm like, well, not all, not all no, the covers. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> that one. Oh, yeah. that's adorable. My kids don't respect me that much. That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my kids do. They really look up to me. Uh, they, 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 they do look up to me. All right. So, who got to choose last time? Who chose this mess of a freaking... Was that Oddfell? Was that you? Shame <laughs> her. Shame her. I thought it would be easy, and then I looked at it and went... Oh, no. You almost what caused a breakup in this chat. Like, people were arguing and throwing rocks at each other. It was... You want to choose the next one? This is great. What should we do for the next one? What's a good era of X-Men? Because, I mean, we could do Road to Onslaught and make it fun. We could do the things in between Onslaught and Operation Zero Tolerance or the things between Operation Zero Tolerance and Apocalypse of 12. Could try, try to, to fix the mess of, of the end of X-Factor. Or we could try to fix the mess of the beginning of X-Factor. Yeah. Because we don't know what they're thinking right now. Because the books they have mapped were before for the era of oh 
let's just make an Excalibur Omnibus. Let's make a New Mutants. They weren't thinking. They were thinking, oh, people are just going to buy this. Let's bat X Factor. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. What part of X Factor? Beginning, end, middle, all? I mean, it's 149 issues, and we see what we got ourselves into tonight. With 149 issues, we would think four Omnis, right? Oh, God bless. Do we want to tackle all of X Factor? That would be kind of fun, honestly. Like, from beginning to end. Including the things that have already been collected. Like volume Henry one? Or... Yeah, volume one. The book you have to the left-hand side of your ear. Other left. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, oh, there oh there no! We broke four one. Cyclops. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> but no, this one, yes. Yes. I'm dropping Riley, what do you think? It yeah, would be a I don't lot know. of double dipping. Yeah, uh, it's... we can leave some things out, and we can argue about what to leave out that's already mapped somewhere else. Should we should we make it like a, a first half of X Factor and and do one half now and one half later? Or do you want to do everything? Yeah, would you like cut off at Inferno since it's already been omnibus? Right, that's the thing. I think we could do it all. What do you think, Peter? I know you. I'm just afraid I know you've already got this in your crushing crisis reading order. You bastard. I'm just afraid that it's going to be a redux of our initial disagreement when we got together to do the Uncanny X Men Volume <laughs> Five map because you don't know you don't that. know what to do with X Factor One through Eight until you know what's going to happen with Uncanny X Men Volume Five and Volume Six. That's my only concern. I'm okay. I'm okay. With almost brought an early end okay, to the fellowship. Whatever. You know what? I'm okay with doing everything because that's that's the way Marvel is thinking right now. Oh crap! There are only people that are buying X Factor by Peter David that haven't bought it. Excalibur New Mutants. Yeah. So we have to take into account Peter David's X Factor. Okay, let's do it. Let's map X Factor. Let's do. Yeah. It. Fuck it. Let's do it. One through forty. Uh, one forty nine. Right. Yep. Let's do it all. I think it'll be. Right. Fun. It'd be yeah. a good argument. Good discussion. Cool. All right. There's always more X Men for after. Oh, absolutely. There's so much crap to be collected. Yeah. Let's do um, X Factor 1 through 149. That'd be fun. Cross All right. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, thank you for joining us. This was a lot of fun. Thank you all again for joining me. Um, Roundtable, uh, from top to bottom, where can people find you all when you're not hanging out with me? Oh, Phil, ladies oh. first. Um, so I am Odfell, uh, as my name says in the corner, that is my, oh, this way, that is my name on pretty much every social media platform. I'm on almost every platform, I think at this point. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, um, Twitter, it's a, a zero, but I do comic content. Um, I do a whole bunch of cosplays and stuff like that. So if that is your cup of tea, definitely go check me out. All right. Thank you, Peter. Well, I am known throughout the internet as Crisis with a K. My website, crushingcrisis.com, has the home to a map of all the existing collected editions for pretty much all of Marvel, including all of X-Men. And if you're trying to find my comics content elsewhere, just look for Crushing Comics, even on YouTube, even though that's not the name of the channel, it's the name of the show. We cover every single X-Men issue out in this Age of Krakoa every single week in a show called This Week in X, as well as covering books from my vast collection and my new halls here in New Zealand as well. All right. Omnibus Collector, who are you? Where can people find you? You can find me on that channel, The Omnibus Collector, and uh, that's where I'll be putting my new videos. Uh, I've got a couple things in the pipeline. I just need to actually film them and edit them. But in the meantime, if you want to get some little bits and pieces of me having fun and talking to people, uh, I have been doing a lot the past couple of weeks on TikTok. I'm actually at about to hit 25,000 followers on there. So. Oh my gosh. What? Heck yeah. what? You're not a 15 year old girl. How are you have 25,000 followers? I don't know. That's it's it's amazing. honestly crazy. The amount real quick shot up. Yeah, you told me to get on TikTok and I was like, that's ridiculous. I'm not doing that. I don't even know how to TikTok. But that's awesome, man. Congratulations. What are you on TikTok? The Omnibus Collector? Still the Omnibus Collector. All right. And me, you can find me here every day on near mint condition i will be back tomorrow uh reading off tiger eyes list of the top 50 most wanted marvel omnis that you all an, voted for an annual holiday it's an annual holiday for a lot of people yeah and i have the privilege to read that to everybody so it's a lot of fun uh so that's it and i need to figure out how to get on discord because I, I don't even 
I, I can't even Discord. I can't even social media, guys. Isn't that one of your Discord. one of your uh, Patreon things? Is you have a Discord, but you can't figure shut, out how to? Okay, shut sorry. Up, shut up, Peter. Why would you do that? On there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. my wife handles that. I don't know, dude. I can't even tweet, tweet, or um, what's the other thing? Instagram. Can't I can't even tag Odd Fail on my Instagram. Can't even do that. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to these wonderful folks. Uh, everybody, have a wonderful night and stay healthy, stay safe. This was a lot of fun. <laughs>